every year many, many stupid people graduate from college. And if they can do it, so can you. Ladies, gentlemen and variations thereupon, this is Modern Escapism. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Professor Oodles and joining us in today's class, we have majoring in amateur dramatics from the York College of Competitiveness and Exquisite Tantrums, it's Stig. Hello. I'm back. It's back, baby. Majoring in the nautical sciences and sexual health from the Northern France Académie de Maritime, it's Biggie. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Bonjour would have done. <laughs> yeah. And majoring in body art and ancient practices from the Bristolian College of Groupies and Merch Sellers, it's Candy. Morning, sir. Good morning. And unfortunately, Gadget won't be joining us this week as he's been expelled for lewd behaviour. We'll see him <laughs> next time. Keep getting his cock out. <laughs> <laughs> Frowned upon. So, before we get into the show, please consider becoming one of our sexy and incredibly cool patrons to help us divide and conquer the podcasting world. Details are in our show notes, but mainly check out our website, modernescapism.co.uk, for more exquisite content and links to everything we do. And now, it's time for our oldest segment of the show. It's Biggie's breaking news as of last week. Biggie! (laughs) Yes, have I got news for you. So, um, I do. Here it is. Um, so Embracer, uh, a company has d- established the Embracer Games Archive to save as much of the games industry as possible. According to an article in Eurogamer, the company formerly known as THQ Nordic have announced mm. plans to preserve video games to archive and save as much of the video games industry as possible. According to the article, they have already successfully archived 50,000 games, consoles and accessories at its hub in Sweden. So um, they're also asking for people to obviously, if you've got something that might be worth of interest to donate. I'm a big fan of this. I don't know if they're doing it for any nefarious reasons, but I'm still a big fan of it. I'm sure they probably are, but it's fine. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'm surprised it's taken this long. Yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, we, we have, there's already exhibitions, isn't there? And there is some... Some place that's dedicated to video games somewhere, I'm sure. But it is something that I think is really important because, yes, we have emulation available to us, but I think it, it, it does need some serious thought about it. considering how quickly the technological world moves on so fast. It's, mm-hmm. it's important that this stuff is sort of archived, especially yeah, in the digital age well as well. That was much uh, more difficult to keep track of. Absolutely. <coughs> Speaking of which, of difficulties. Uh, Sony's PlayStation Plus had a bit of a weird launch over in Asia. Um, not only did they... Uh, this is a quite a difficult one to explain, but basically people that had stacked some PlayStation Plus um, tiers, so I think you could have it up to like three years, when they were yeah. trying to convert it into the new tiers for the, the new service, um, they ended up being told they had to pay the mm. difference between what they tried to save. Uh, yeah. Which is outrageous. Apparently, it was a glitch, and that uh, Sony have now apologised. Oh yeah, and, and of course it was. That, alleg- allegedly, yeah, but um, sure it was. <laughs> according to the Digital Foundry, they've also had some issues about the emulation for the PlayStation One, Two, and PSP titles. The quality, mm. particularly some of the games, are in fifty hertz and are not performing particularly well at all. Oh dear. Do you know what? I really don't know the difference between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. I remember when I was younger playing the PlayStation 1 and sometimes it asking you, and when I clicked on a certain hertz, it made the game black and white. That's yeah. all I can remember. <laughs> Obviously, my telly wasn't support of, supporting it, but I, is, is it frame rate? Is it a frame rate thing? I don't really get what it is. Is it a smoothness or... Yeah, I think Someone it was. with a science it, it, background should know. faster. 
Because it, it would put the, the border in as well, wouldn't it? it you, yes, it would, yeah. Border if it was... Mm. But apparently really they, they just ran a question like that. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah. God, he has to be excluded, didn't can we, he? Can we just text him quick? <laughs> I think Biggie's right. I think it's maybe something to do with the speed and how it ran on your TV, but um, I, I'm really not shocked with Sony fucking this up, mm. to be honest. <laughs> Who is? <laughs> Especially when the they emulation for their classic was so poor that other people fixed it for Sony so that it would work properly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, they've got the same issue again, haven't they? And uh, speaking of which, Gran Turismo, yes, that fantastic racing game has for some reason been um, put forward for development for the studio for a movie. And Neil oh. Blomkamp apparently has been approached to develop and direct it. I only put this in there because I just don't fucking understand why on earth that has been put forward as a movie. They're just starting to grab like, at anything, aren't they, at the moment? Any IP that's film. available. What's that going to be about? Do you know what I mean? It's just Risk. there's no plot know, behind Gran Turismo. So yeah, exactly. But it's just there's already better stuff out there. There's just no point. I don't get that. Still waiting for the uh, Tetris film. It's just Sony <laughs> doing um, like if you've seen Uncharted, they obviously have the big whole like Sony movies with all the games in the logo, similar to like the Sega one before the Sonic film. It's just them going, oh, let's yeah. just make a movie out of our IPs. We, we, our, next five years, we'll see. God of War, um, we'll yeah, see the rapper, the rapper. Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> the rapper, the rapper. <laughs> that work is an animated movie, I'm sure. Yeah, actually, Games Horizon isn't, haven't, isn't that in the news this week? At Netflix, mm-hmm. turn that into a TV yeah. show. Yep. There you yeah. go. <sighs> yeah. So yeah, there's a certain IP I can understand, but just Grand Turismo, I don't get that at all. I suppose well, I, I can understand speed, it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose <laughs> they can because it's a clean slate, isn't it? Maybe they can see the end of Fast and Furious. On the horizon, they're like, right, we can sneak oh, in now. No. <laughs> to play, you can make to play a good racing game, a racing film, like, and have like, you know, some. This kind is of what story I'm saying about racer against racer, and make it exciting and have exciting races, and you know, if it's shot well and if there's a good story behind it, and there's a so rivalry not the Fast between, and Furious franchise, then. yeah, rivalry between yeah, drivers, and you know, you could do a kind to of play Devil's Advocate Ferrari massively. Thing, yeah. yeah, that's uh, to play the Devil's Advocate, like. Gran Turismo is a serious, like, racing aficionados game. So if they do a serious racing aficionados type film, make it beautiful and, you know what I mean, make the soundtrack. It might not be about a specific person. It might be about a team of, a racing team. Do you know what I mean? I reckon, I reckon like, um, Ford versus Ferrari and yeah. uh, Rush, films like that. Do you know what I mean? There's, 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 some, there's, some, there's something there. It doesn't have to be a silly... Fast and Furious, because it won't be. It's Gran Turismo. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not impressed, though. But there you go. Uh, <laughs> you just want Kill Zone. Which... <laughs> they could yeah, do a Kill Zone. Sure. There you go. The, you know, Halo's had a TV show. That yeah. Sony will bring out Kill Zone. John Kill Zone. Be proved right. <laughs> There's already talk of uh, Kill Zone in VR, isn't there? So uh... Huge, if true. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, there was uh, Metallica were performing in concert in Brazil when uh, Joyce M. Figueroa, who was 39 weeks pregnant, was sitting in the mm-hmm. special area at the show, uh, began to give birth oh, as the Enter the Sandman was playing. <laughs> what a weird to Enter the Sandman, not Enter the Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, whatever. That's a pod title. <laughs> Enter the Sandman. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Attack on Titan. What was it? Attack the Titan. Attack on the Titan. Attack the Titan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Attack the Titans. <laughs> I think that's quite cool. That's a story and a half, isn't it? Like, when people say, Do they call the born, baby like, Metallica? I was born here, I'm born there. It's like, I was born at Metallica concert during Enter Sandman. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'd have to call the kid Sandman, yeah. though, and that's not so cool. Sandy. Maybe, call maybe it, Sandy. Na- could call it Lars. No, not oh, Lars. Lars. Who'd want that? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone but Lars. Mm. He'd probably sue the baby. He would. I'd call it um It. The child. The child. Sad, the man. baby. Um this joke Please. would be better if I could remember the name of the streaming the download service. Napster. 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 Yeah, I would call the baby Napster. <laughs> baby Napster. <laughs> <laughs> How many weeks yeah. are you supposed to be pregnant for? Is it not thirty nine? I don't know. Neither yeah. do I. Do you stay no weeks? That's, that's why would average. you go to a Metallica concert if you're? I've never been pregnant. pregnant. I, I imagine that it was probably a delayed gig from the pandemic, and they thought, uh, "Fuck yeah. it." Yeah. Even I'll so, go. 
No, but you're still get quite in a self a, a, a safe environment if you're in like a special area. And like, like when when my missus was pregnant the second time, because it was like a oh, second run, easy peasy. She went to fucking Scarborough, and she was like, "Oh, I'm started labour." I'm like, "You're not having a Scarborough baby. Get back here now." <laughs> <laughs> so we got lucky on that one. Northern <laughs> jokes. <laughs> You don't want to uh, so yeah, there's uh, just a, a few announcements of um, Jodie Foster in True Detective season four. Uh, I need to watch season three. Yeah, I haven't got around to yeah, that. Me but too. One and two, I really liked. It's not as good as one, but two wasn't either, was it? No, nothing as good. But as I enjoyed one. it all the same. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a great series. So um, all up for Jodie Foster in that one. Uh, Mandalorian season three being announced for February twenty three. Looking forward to that. Um, there's been lots of trailers which we were just about to go into that were, uh, came out this week, but I just wanted to Big mention, of week. course, that that uh, Ray Liotta sadly passed away at sixty seven. Yeah, which is far yeah. too early. Yeah, that Absolute was a shocking, legend. really, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I like just he's in he's, he's in a good few. He's in a good few of my all time favorite films. Mm. Uh, he's in he's in Goodfellas, obviously. Blow, I love Blow. He's in that. He's just I don't know. There's something about Ray Liotta when he was on screen. He had a mm. he had a charisma and a presence. Captivating. And he, he had he had traditional boyish good looks when he was younger, and he aged into his face a little differently. But I still, yeah, fucking hell. Mm, that's that the last scene in Hannibal where he's eating his own brain just yep. still gives yeah. me the yeah. yeah. Yeah, Goodfellas is an absolute masterpiece. Like, every yeah, one of my favorite films of all time. It's a film that everybody should watch, and he is outstanding yeah, yeah, yeah. in that film. Um, everyone yeah. sh- needs to watch Goodfellas. Um, yeah. I'll read the book as well. Read, read the book, Wise Guys. He's fucking sensational. He was also, obviously, the voice of Tommy Vissetti in uh, yep. Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which is my favorite Grand Theft Auto. Just yeah. perfect. Same. Just perfect for that character. And f- I don't know. I don't know if this is true, but for me, back then as well, that was one of the first massive big celebrities to voice games. That was a huge get, in my opinion. I know there was. Uh, there's been others, but that was huge. Yeah, I think you're right. Probably. That was around 2002, wasn't it? Because so it's a massive yeah. game. It's not just a cameo. Like obviously, you got a few yeah. celebrities doing the point and click audio, little bits of audio, repeated audio. But that was a full fledged 40 hour game, and he was the lead throughout. I thought it was fantastic. I know there were quite a few celebrities in that, but huge. Yeah. And that character will, for me, for my money, always be the best GTA uh, oh, protagonist. Look, Vice City is one of my favourites. I mean, yeah, I mean, you go back and play it now, it doesn't compare to something like GTA Five, but just... Yeah, they've the all got time, big rectangle heads. <laughs> at the time, it was like they'd moved on from three, now they had like a protagonist who was voiced and acted... Yeah. Like the setting, the eighty setting, the music, the look of that game was incredible. Was and, and he incredible. just, he just they did, added they did, to that. They did what they, uh, what people didn't expect with Vice City as well. They made the city smaller but more dense and more lived in. And I've yeah. always preferred that with GTA games. Like Five's no, you might think Five's a massive map, but San Andreas is even bigger. But there's a lot of emptiness in San Andreas. A lot. Mm. So, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Paul went out to Ray Liotta. Sad Absolutely. times. But uh, to cheer us up, there were lots of new um, trailers announced or came out this week. Uh, any particular favourites? Just a bit. Uh, Thor. Thor, for Love sure. Thunder. Thor. Look, Thor's, yeah. we, we, we finally saw the God Butcher oh, himself. Yeah. Uh, Christian Bale as God the God Butcher. Like, they've obviously changed him a bit from the comic book. I think I that's like a it. good decision. People I like how he looks. He, look, he looks less Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and the reason they say it's like you've got Christian Bale in your film. Put don't cover Christian him up. Bale in your film. Don't cover him up with CG. You look at someone yeah. like uh, Proxima Midnight in uh, Infinity War. You can't tell that it's her. I didn't even know it was. Like, it's uh, Gemma. Is it... No, it's uh, you know what? I feel really bad for forgetting her name, but she's she's from, from the from Leftovers, Eternals, isn't it? No, from Leftovers. Oh, what am I thinking? <sighs> It is um, Carrie Carrie Coon. Is it? Yeah, exactly. I didn't. I didn't even know that. But now you said it is clear. It's Carrie Coon, and because she's covered in CGI, you cannot tell. And oh you, my god! You can't have someone like Christian Bale <laughs> be in your film. 
and cover him up like that. <coughs> and not only that is, take away the nose and have him all white. Like, everyone's just going to say he looks like Voldemort. Yeah. So what's the point? Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. love the look. I love the, the vampiric kind of... Like, he looks really scary. Um, uh, Taika has said He looks that paler than me, which is strange. He's going to be <laughs> one of the best MCU villains you've ever seen. I just hope it's not wasted. He's, he's, he's great in the books, and he's, he's, he's um, a presence in the books that's always there as well, so I hope they don't just kill him off in this film. Yeah. I, don't no, do an but... Ultron. Don't do an Ultron, please. Yeah, don't do that. My don't heart waste, can't take don't it. Waste him. It doesn't even get to be someone that... Sorry. No, sorry, carry on. I was going to say, it doesn't need to be someone that is like an over... Like a villain that carries on over various yeah, different just, films. Just let him survive. Just, he survives, he can come back, he, we'll see him again yeah. kind of thing. Um, if, he, if he's good in it, but you know, I trust Taika Waititi, he's saying it, he's great in it. It's Christian Bale, he usually is great in it. So, yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward to that. And for all account, no tantrums on set, so... Well, that's a shame. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> he's been good for the past like, 10 years, hasn't he? He's been a good Can't guy. have it all. Mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we also saw a trailer for Willow. That looks really good. Well into that. That looks quite funny. So I didn't realise it was a series rather than a film. I was about to say, is it a series? Mm. Yes. I've, I've never yeah, fully I'm watched Willow. On that one. Oh, I think it looks really <laughs> fun. I'm well in for something that's like that. Uh, we get in, you know, they had a Wheel of Time and we've got Lord of the Rings. We've got all these like kind of super serious um, Let's have a daft one. ones. Let's just have something that's family friendly and fun. And that looks, that's what it looks like. It looks when the music kicked off in the trailer, I was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> I've never fully watched Willow. I know, I know, it's the Val Kilmer and Warwick Davis uh, joint, and I know yeah. people love it. And I have seen bits of it. I've seen a, a goat. I've seen, I've seen Val Kilmer in a cage. I just, I, I I've never watched Quite it. All. Horrific in parts when they turn into pigs. Is it? Yeah. Is it George Lucas? Yeah. Lucas yeah, far too well. Yeah. Far too well. Yeah, it's one of the ones that oh. Disney acquired when they bought like loads of Lucas. Well, at least it's not wasted because I bet I bet it's someone's favorite film. Do you know what I mean? Oh, my yeah. wife loves it. Yeah, yeah. kids really I enjoyed always, it when we watched it. I always find um, that Willow and Legend were quite interchangeable. Like in my memories, I can't really distinguish what happened in either well, of Legend's them. Legend's fucking terrible. I though. can't. I can't remember <laughs> anything about Legend. Legend is terrible. Trust me. Tom Cruise Legend, one. So. Tim Curry. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking terrible. <laughs> I haven't seen it since I was shy. about five. <laughs> oh, it's shy. I just like Kroll. I always remember Kroll. That was really cool. Kroll's good. And it, 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 there was a bit of a, a renaissance, wasn't it? Because you had, you had um, Labyrinth as well, a never ending oh, story. Hulk, you had all Hulk these. the Slayer as well. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. And That's the Dark weird. Crystal. <gasps> Ooh. Um, two more trailers. We've got Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1. Just yeah. a lot of action shots in that. Not really much in way of any plot ideas. So yeah, don't like no watching Tom Cruise run. You have no idea what's happening. It's literally just a series yeah. of action shots. And I think there's like I said it before on the podcast. Spoken. I love watching Tom Cruise running. I don't know. There's something yeah. about it. He's a great yeah. runner. He runs. He runs a lot. <laughs> when he films. runs, when he runs in his mouth. Is, uh, is it a smart car or is it a Fiat or something that they're using? It's unusual. It's such a tiny car. Used in the uh, stunts, that's quite good. Yeah, not sure, but I'm sure it'll be like the last few Mission Impossible films have been great, and I don't expect this to be any less great. Is that right? I like, I, I like, I really like the last one. The last one were really good. Really yeah, the last one. I, I like them all. I like them all. I don't think they've done a bad not one. Two's not so great. I don't think it's shocking. It's just not I like don't good. Particularly like two. Again, Metallica best soundtrack. Th- best theme <laughs> and the biscuit. And biscuit as well, yeah. There's some good stuff in too, but overall, I thought mm. it just it just jumped really quickly, didn't it? From like kind of a uh, espionage film with a few action sequences into e- a character Ethan piece, didn't being it? a complete superhero. Like, yeah, it was yeah. he grew his hair so out wi- as well. Wildly different. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Final trailer: Star Wars and Dor. We had a lot of Star Wars stuff come out this. Uh, weeks has been the Star Wars. Explain this to me, this Andor. So Andor yeah, is a character from Rogue One, and this Which is character Andor. Was he the? Um... <laughs> no, I, I like Rogue One. Was he the like French Resistance guy? I think he was French. No, no, I, I, I know I've been uh, mustache, but, little like, mustache. I, uh, I've I've seen Rogue One once, and I can't remember. 
but it's, it's a... <laughs> and or just this doesn't mean anything to yeah. me. What, what is, what is funny or? was I did when I watched this, I thought this is very Rogue One esque looking, and then I did mm. a little reading up about it. I was like, oh, it's a prequel to Rogue One, so it's about a character from Rogue One, and I know it's got Mads Mikkelsen in it, so it looks really good. Like it, it doesn't. It looks like a more serious side of Star Wars thing, which kind of Rogue One was. So I think if you like Rogue yeah. One, then you're probably going to like this one. Is that another build up to people that we know are going to die in the future? <laughs> I mean, we do. If you've seen Rogue One, spoiler, yeah, if this guy dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ending to Rogue One, though, fuck. Mm. It's the best yeah. ending to Star Wars. Yeah. I watched uh, it. Kind of uh, gutted it's... that everyone died. Yeah, on a side no. Well, you already know they did, don't you? Because they say it. Yeah, in the Star actor. Wars. Yeah. A, a side note from that is I watched a a um, TikTok clip this of someone watching. Rogue One for the first time and the partner's yeah. filming it and obviously they did the big bit where it all blows up and everything and she's crying and then she sat there like yeah. weeping and then Vader comes on screen and does his whole thing and she's all like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that it's, bit it's is the tonal shift my favorite, it's, great. it's my favourite Star Wars moment I think it just shows the sheer power yeah. and I hope we get that mm-hmm. in this uh, this new show that we'll probably be talking about in the Nexus mm-hmm. so that's it mm-hmm. Is that the news? Is that the news, Biggie? Uh, yeah. That's it, mate. So over to you, Lulz, for a traffic update. Uh, just get on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> get the bus, it's easier. You have to wait a bit longer, though. Right, so on to the Nexus. We've got we've got a, probably a jam-packed Nexus here, so it's going to be here, there, and everywhere, because a lot, like with the trailers and stuff, a lot's been happening this week. An absolute awful lot. So I'm going to start with you, Biggie, because you're the man that does the least. <laughs> oh, God. We well, do. I was off ill. <laughs> yeah, I was off ill for the uh, best part of a week as well, yeah. so I ended up <laughs> watching a few things, to be perfectly honest. Um, oh, did you? What I did catch was um, We Own the City. We Own the City, oh, yeah. which was the... Um, I don't know, it was almost like a fo- follow-on. Yeah, from the, the air, from the, the guys that made the wire, and it's so good. I've watched episode so one and two. Bloody good, really into it. The it's wire's phenomenal. So it's got it's got big shoes to fill. And there's actually quite a lot of uh, recurring actors that have popped up as well, which I, I didn't know. Oh, so that's I was good. Really, really surprised to see them um, appear in that. Uh, I've lost my notes for the show, but basically, <laughs> um, with, yeah, with this been a murder. <laughs> it centers around John, John Bernthal's character, doesn't it? There's a lot, yeah, of, it, a lot yeah. of time jumping back about, and forth, setting things up. Yeah, it's to do with the like trailer to it. I'll wait while they're all. The, are they all out now? No, no, it's no, a week. Uh, the, the, still on. I'm just going to wait until tomorrow the is the final. It's the six, uh, six episode, and the finals nice. out tomorrow. But it, it's nice. just again brilliant writing, brilliant acting, uh, viewpoints from all over the place. It does time jump. Um, but it goes into an investigation to, I think it's seven police officers that are involved with the uh, gun trace task force. Um, and basically, there's some corruption involved. And John Bern- Bernthal, is that how you say his name? Bernthal. Bernthal, yeah. His character is brilliant because the only way they can show the time jump is by changing his hairstyle and what hair he's got in his face. Um, <laughs> yeah. shows the time jump. So, so it's t- actually quite tell my funny time, at first when you time see Time jump it. as well. But um, once you get your head past that, um, yeah, he's he's superb. You can't take your eyes off him when he's on screen. He absolutely chews the scenery, but in in the right way. He's so nasty in this show. Um, and yeah, there's loads of cameos for people from the Wire in different characters as well. So they're, they're not c- carrying over from uh, the same thing. So it's really nice, brilliantly done, very entertaining. Um, I've gutted it's only six episodes. Um, I assume there's going to be some more. I kind of like that it's six episodes. I'm kind of oh, into yeah, that. It's good that it finishes, but it's just so. Uh, I don't want it to end. Uh, unless it's uh, so much out, mate. Going to have like uh, it is going to be like a follow-on season thing, and six episodes a season is yeah. not the worst thing. No, not at all. I think eight's always quite a sweet spot. It is. Yeah, the wire was twelve episodes. Mm. Uh, Series. Yeah, you're right. I, I've enjoyed what I've only, like I said, I've only watched the first two, but I've enjoyed what I've seen so far and the different viewpoints from you've got obviously from 
within the police force, the task force, going up to the commissioner's kind of view, and then Ooh. people within the mayor mayoral office and that kind of thing. Like it's it's coming at you from all different the directions. Department of Justice investigating yeah. why these police officers are still serving. Why have they not been suspended or fired yeah, and well, all this kind of thing? And why has this guy got so many complaints against him yet nothing's happened? Oh yeah, Josh Charles. He plays um, Hersel, and he's the guy from the. Did you ever watch The Good Wife? Yeah. Any of you see that? Yeah, well, he was like the love interest, Will, the lawyer. And he was like mm-hmm. this, you know, quite a a straight character, but very sort of the eye candy of the show. And in this, he's yeah, he's a nasty like you. To work. He's excellent, really playing against type. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's he's really playing against type. He's fantastic. Um, but yeah, I also watched The Northman. I thought that was really good. Uh, really, it's good, that. isn't it? It's really good. Really enjoyed that. It didn't do anything new in the in the concept of the story. I just thought what they delivered was incredible. I thought it was just so so beautifully shot, so well acted. But well, that kind it's of a director that kind of... a director that's not done a bad film yet. So. Yeah, exactly. Keep it, and it, keep it, it going. It felt like a video game at one point. He had to do the side quest to go and get his sword. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. it, it, was, it was it was really well done. I really enjoyed it. I, I just thought the cinematography was uh, second to none in that. Really, yeah. really mm. good. I, I, like Stunning. The, the cinematography in the final scene is, I'm not going to spoil it, but that was just, I fucking loved that. The way that was shot. Mm. That final fight. I thought it looked absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really, really, really good. And the last Flawless. thing I watched was uh, Obi Wan Kenobi so far. Uh, We're all going to talk about well. that in a second. Yep. So I oh, thought you we're might all going to jump into so, that. Uh, we haven't got there yet. And had time. We haven't got there yet. Stig, have you got anything that's not related to the two big shows that have dropped this week? I do. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Because <laughs> Let's do it. I really, really fucking enjoyed this film. I'm a massive fan of Chippendale when I was a kid. And coming back and doing this film, when I saw that they were going to do this kind of Roger Rabbit-esque cartoon characters living in the real world, it, I was like, ah, oh, really? I saw the trailer. The trailer looks pretty fun, but I, I love what they've done with it. I love that. So the concept is Chippendale... Rescue Rangers was cancelled, and throughout the years between, um, Chip has just got a normal job, and Dale's got himself this like CGI update. So one of them is still a cartoon character, and one's like a CGI character. And yeah, Dale's basically um, like Will Wheaton. He's trying to yeah. recapture his youth. <laughs> and uh, Monterey Jack <clears throat> goes missing. Uh, he's voiced by Eric Banner in this. Uh, this is I should say actually this is. Um, Done by the Lonely Island guys, two thirds of them. So it's Andy Sandberg and John uh, Mullaney uh, play Chip and Dale. Yeah. And yeah, so Monterey Jack goes missing, and it's up to Chip and Dale to try and find out and track down um, where he's gone. And I just really enjoyed what they did with that. I really like, I love the car. I know you Oodle said it was a bit cameo heavy, but for me, that was one of the biggest joys about it. Seeing what That's they did That's the only with the major cameos. flaw I had with it. I, say, I, it, didn't, it, it I, I love that. I did like it. But not, like you've got some great, you've got like Will Arnett playing Sweet Pete. Um, oh, I love, Fierce I love Will Arnett anyway. Seth Rogen's in it. J.K. Simmons is the police captain, and I mean it's already been spoiled and out there. As one, but one of the cameos, U- Ugly Sonic, amazing. <laughs> Ugly Sonic's in it. I Ugly Sonic is in that. it. It's Ugly Sonic at his own little table at a, 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 a like a Comic Con convention with his every teeth. Time, Every time they talk to him, like one of the characters just starts looking at his teeth and it zooms in on his teeth. <laughs> starts talking slowly and they're looking at him in disgust. And it... <laughs> Apparently, Paramount did not know they were going to do that. But because it's really. Because it's... Yeah, but because it's a parody. It's theirs anyway, isn't it? They got, yeah, yeah, they could get away with it. Disney were able to get away with it as on, a par- on the parody th- side of things. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it just mixed in loads of Disney characters, loads of non-Disney characters. Uh, you get like cameos from like um, from Thundercats, from Transformers, Voltron, from all different. Voltron Disney was characters. there. Yeah, um, Seth Rogen's character I absolutely loved. It, it, it do this kind of mid two thousands uncanny valley where he to make it look mo- like Polo Express. <laughs> yeah, he can't move. He's, so it's it's in between that where you know where characters looked. They tried to make them look realistic, but they look really weird. 
Mm. So he can't, eyes move never go head, down. can't move his eyes properly, and <laughs> the jokes that come from that are so good. That is funny. And there is another I think Seth that... Rogen joke later on, which was just yes, that that is really good. Oof, the, my, my favorite joke in it is a joke that's not no one's talked about. Is the fact that. Chip's got those fucking AirPods in his ears and there's a massive sticking out of his ears. <laughs> Love that. When he's going home from work and he's got a full-size AirPods in his ears. It's funny. Yeah, and no one's really, talking about that. It's just funny how like these are obviously little chipmunks. They're tiny, living in this human world. And obviously regular-sized yeah. humans, they're chipmunks. And it just, I just really thought it worked really well. And um, yeah, I was well into it. It's, uh, it's on Disney+, Plus, so it's definitely worth checking out. On the back of that, though, just before you move on, when when that finished, that film finished, because I watched it with kids and they fucking loved it. They had to ask me every time something popped up, what's that from, what's that from? But after that, and the credits rolled and stuff, it was like, watch all seasons of Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I went, fuck, I didn't know that was on. Yeah, Sat and watched there. at least 10 episodes of that. Fuck me, there's some good episodes of that. I um, I watched this without my kids. So I wanted to watch oh, did you? this. Didn't want to wait yeah. the weekend to watch it. I wouldn't have had time to watch it otherwise. I was like, fuck this, I'm going to watch this because I wanted to watch I was, my, I loved Chip and Dale when I was younger. It, there was episodes I remember that they show at the beginning of this as well. I was like, but there's a joke right at the beginning literally had me laughing in the first minute. Yeah, it's um, funny. It is really funny. It is really yeah. funny. I, I like Lonely Island guys anyway. I think I think they, they produce some good stuff. Yeah. Main thing yeah, this week though. I've been watching that with my daughter. I think Candy wants to jump in on me with this one. Is uh, I had a need for speed. I entered you the did. danger zone. Take my breath away. I went to see Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun my Maverick. My word, this film is fucking incredible. It's so good, isn't it? I'm so glad. <laughs> it's so that we agree. so good. <clears throat> One of the best action films I have ever seen at the cinema. It's the year. Wow. It's the movie of the year for me. Like without yeah. a doubt, straight up there. It's so good. Um, quick. A quick backstory on on the whole film and the premise is this is about Maverick. He is pulled back into the Top Gun unit because he needs to teach a bunch of young, kind of the best pilots. Um, the pilots are around kind of the same age he was in the eighties, and he's got to teach them to do this all this stuff to to do this mission. They've got to blow up this um, uranium uh, base that's been made underground. They've got all this things they've got to do and got to learn to avoid being killed, basically. And he's the only man that can teach them. And to throw a spanner in the works, one of the uh, pilots is Goose's son, Rooster, played by Miles Teller. Oh, Goose didn't make it, did he? No, so there's a lot of... um, Isn't this plot to Hot Shots? (laughs) Kind of resentment from Rooster's side, from like, obviously, Maverick and Goose and and and, and kind of blaming his dad and other things going on there as well and Maverick worrying you know he kind of tried to take on the father figure and he's worried about he even says in the film if I take him on this mission he could die and I'll lose him forever if I don't take him on this mission he'll resent me forever and I'll never see him again yeah. and he's kind of got to weigh all these options up you've got a love story on the side with Jennifer Connelly playing a character called Penny which I thought was a really nice side story to it all I think the chemistry between them was really really good Um it looks like this part might have been put in there for Charlie's character originally, but them not bringing Kelly Mc, uh, McGillis back. I think yeah. They just, they just went with someone else and knew, and it works. It, like They play off them two having a relationship before, and this is kind of re- he's, he's back in, around the area and it's rekindled that relationship. And it, it's a nice love story on the side. It works really well. But this film, honestly, action is where this film's at. You could nitpick at all the other, a lot of other little bits here and there in it, but the action in this film is absolutely incredible, and you can tell and understand why Tom Cruise refused to put this out on streaming. Yeah, during the pandemic, he flat yeah, out because this, this, this film was is finished not years ago, wasn't it? I think yeah, it's been in the camera for two years. Yeah, yeah, twenty twenty, I think. Yeah, um, but just to um, piggyback, I just say you... very quickly. Oh, I was just going to say, I thought it was a, an odd question that. Kurt asked in the Discord was, "Do you need to see the original to see this?" And to me, you would. It's the right? second one. Um, I don't. I, I wouldn't say so. It's a, actually, my friend you that, don't. Yeah, my friend that really? I went wow, with. That's really surprising. Hadn't seen it, and she, it's fine. Most of it's kind of it, it, it's explained in flashbacks and stuff. But even so, like to to go off what you were saying with the story, um, I think with with the mission itself, the they they knew that you don't really care 
about the intricacies and the, the small details. So you, you just know it's a difficult mission and they don't go into too much detail. But yeah, in terms of having seen the, the first one, I don't think you need to have seen the first one. That, that's what a lot of films, when, when films don't have two or three in the title, that usually means it's a, not a reboot, but a soft, st- a new story, do you know what I mean? So you, yeah. you, you can get away with not seeing it. Because if they have called it Top Gun 2, you'd have expected it to be a full-on direct sequel. I mean, even then, there's not a lot of it. If you're if you're going with somebody who hasn't seen it before, it takes about two minutes to explain really the the main. They're in planes. The first one. They're in planes. <laughs> <laughs> Play volleyball. You, you have a bit of you know if you've seen the original and you have uh, affection for it, you know you 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 know you kind of um, soundtrack a bit great. more. You feel a bit more towards <laughs> Cruz's character, towards his relationship with Goose's son, and and obviously with um, Iceman as well. So yeah, ah. it. it, it you don't need to have seen it. The film does it does a good way of explaining what's going on and what happened. Did both of you rewatch the original before you saw this? No, I never I've seen it so many times. I didn't need yeah. to. Do you know? I I did enjoy that they got they they really did fan service well, but they got most of it out of the way in the first like twenty or so minutes, so then it could kind of concentrate on yeah. its own thing. But it it literally starts with back. Danger Zone, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I turned to my friend, like, down, Danger Zone down. kicked in. I turned to my friend. I was like, I fucking love this already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy right now. <laughs> it, the fun it's got one of the best soundtracks of any film ever, yeah. the yep. original. Dude, Danger Zone, he gets on his old Kawasaki. He gets on his old bike and everything, like the same bike and things like that. He's got the same jacket on, that kind of thing. So... It does, it, does, does it well ever, on the does fan it, service. I mean, don't spoil it too much, but does it explain the fact that there's a 60-year-old man in a fighter jet? Yeah, this is the best. <laughs> yeah, but he's a 60-year-old man he in a fighter jet. 60. Gets his no, top off. Does, but he is. is. There's, a, there's another sweaty beach montage. <laughs> Gets the top just, off. I've, yeah. Does it? He looks yeah. great. He looks great he's for 60 his age, this Tom year, Cruise. and uh, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't look 60. No, it but the, this film, honestly, the action in this, you can, like I was saying, there is a reason that Tom Cruise and the rest of the team said this has to be in the cinema. This this isn't going out on streaming service because you have to see this at the cinema. Uh, if you can see it on IMAX, go see it at IMAX. Uh, genuinely, it's, the, the, the plane sequences are incredible. It's all filmed like for the film. So there's no yeah. CGI. Uh, the actors were in cockpits doing their action sequences. I'm, Obviously, they probably weren't doing all the twisters and turnings. That no, probably not. <laughs> but I think di- a lot of the time, actually, they were. Did you hear about the training that they had to do to get into these planes? Really? That's, I, I that's was reading really about impressive. it today. Um, yeah, so they had to learn to breathe. So in some of the scenes, you can you can sort of hear Tom Cruise doing the <laughs> kind of breathing, and that's so. so what the, you're the telling me went. now then is that Miles Teller is a trained fighter. Pilot, he can play the drums to a professional <laughs> level, and he can set him. It, it, uh, I just can't believe that, that that guy, that guy. And this film also has him playing the piano and singing. So there, add that to that. <laughs> yeah. Is he the most? Like Andy says, <laughs> incredible. Some of the making of I've seen of it. Um, they had to train the actors while they're in the plane to understand where the camera is and how to act in front of the camera whilst. Mm-hmm. Spinning around and doing all and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Attention to other planes around out. them. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the making of the original, and some scenes are shot where the actors are in a cockpit, but real while the while they are in the air, and obviously the pilot behind them's flying it. But you just to just get rid of that. Yeah, I mean, someone else flying, I mean? obviously. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but the in terms of the just. I thought, yeah, it's just, there might be a little bit of CGI here and there, but in general, like, matter, does it? sequences between the planes, there's times where they're just weaving in and out of things. There's things that fighter jets can do that I did not know they could do. Yeah, the way they incredible. can move is incredible. It's like ballet. It's, mm. it's honestly, the, the stuff that they do can do in those planes is amazing. Well, the base, and, the base, the design on birds, so this, this should be good. Yeah, it's just, honestly, I've, I've never been felt that exhilarated watching a film. Like Marvel That's perfect, films, perfect way to sum it up. We did, especially yeah. towards the sort of final scene where you know, you know, they're going into a real difficult mission. Me and my friend were so nervous; we were basically just like hugging each other. <laughs> like, I was moving a lot like this, like kept moving, like shuffling my seat, like yeah. gripping the arm, literally gripping the arms, moving my butt to the edge of the seat. Like it's just the woman a couple of seats down from me was crying during the scenes because it was just so overwhelming. Mm. Uh, it crying. looks incredible. She Come was crying. On. Oh, mate, it Come looks incredible. On. It sounds incredible. She obviously has a massive like attachment to Top Gun because even you know the 
everything outside the action as well, like the acting, the cinematography, the the characters, the soundtrack, all of that's great as well. It's not just the action, like everything I, I, around it. I trust Tom, really Tom Cruise films. I know a lot of people slag him off and stuff, but I trust his films. I think he's got a, a good eye for what he needs to do. And I, he, I know he has was. a lot of behind the scenes, he does a lot of the producing and stuff like that, executive yeah. producing and stuff. I know mm. he's got an eye for it. He's one of the best in the world, but he's just a madman yeah. outside of his own. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. why he has he, to he produce most of... of his films. Because he does so many of his own stunts, he has to put his own money into it, basically. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This no, one sure. no one insures him. It's already hit no. 285 million. That's good. So, That's yeah, good. so it's obviously. It, I was there at 10 o'clock this morning, no, 11 o'clock this morning, and half the cinema was full. Like, this, it's going to be massive. And did everyone in the cinema have aviators on? Because I would have gone with aviators on. <laughs> I actually yeah, got some after I saw it. I, shit, you <laughs> yeah. know, I went to TK Maxx. I've got leather jacket, the aviators. I'd have been there, like, <laughs> yeah, just for the need, honestly, the need please, for speed. If, if, you have, if you have any. Interest in seeing this? Don't wait. Do not wait. Go to. The I cinema, might see, see it on it. Tuesday. I literally so I've I, got a spare day. You, you will not. Re- you won't regret it. It's incredible. I'm not far from an IMAX either. I've got a spare day. I w- I would definitely go see it. It's just. Yeah, I love. I put it. my levers on. Any excuse to get them levers on. You know what I mean? Even if it's boiling. <laughs> <laughs> if you do see do it, it at IMAX, you might want to take a sick bag. Because eighty percent of it is in the air. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine with it's that. So good. Even the that. training missions in it, though, you kind of like, oh fucking hell, like. Even that gets you going. Oh, just I'm yeah. up for it. I, I like these type of films because they're different from the aliens are taking over America. I, li- I like to see this kind of different take on action. I'm 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 always up for it. Yeah, there's no bad guy. There's no like you don't know who the bad guy is. It's just we have this just mission. Surgeons, we, have to, isn't it? we have to blow this up. We have yeah. to um, do this, and this is what we have to do. Standard you military. Just t- you're just taking along on the journey, and the action around it is just awesome. I'm down for it, mate. I'm big and Tom style Cruise down for does it. Run. Yes, that's it. You got me. You got me. I love to see the man run on a wing. Cool, cool, cool. It took um, my breath is... away. Oh, I'm waiting for that. Is that is that all yours, uh, Stig? For now. Yes. Is that yours, Candy? For now. Um, I've got we just gonna... one more thing oh, that I saw. Actually, it's it's very very brief because we talk about it all the time. But I finally saw the lighthouse. I watched it after we recorded oh. last week. Ooh. I know. And? Why did I wait? So <laughs> I started watching it. To begin with, I, I struggled. Um, what do you I mean? Like, the boys have done me wrong here. I, I struggled a little oh. bit. I'm so glad I stuck with it. Oh, oh thank God. God. It's so good. So Did you spill your do- beans? Oh, I just spill your beans, boy. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. But just to see those two, just the two of them, Willem Dafoe and uh, Robert Pattinson, acting yeah. and just bouncing off each other. Like, I... I had to like s- sort of stop watch, like Literally. take myself out the moment, and then think. Yeah, yeah, it's intense. Just incredible actors. Like I've never seen Robert Pattinson in a role like that before, and I completely see what you're saying about him now. Oh my god, he's one so of good. the best actors currently going. He is yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely. absolutely. Two guys descending yeah, I, I, into madness. It's just yeah, it's so. Well I, I read a uh, I read a, an article on it when when it came out after it come out after I'd seen it. And someone says it was completely un, un, unrelated to the to the film. But someone said, "What's your favourite play that you've seen?" He's like, "The film, The Lighthouse." I'm yeah. like, "Whoa, that is, it is because it could it easily a play. be two, it, Yeah, two guys on the stage. It's the best so Lovecraft good. play ever, mm. <laughs> and only. <laughs> Excellent! Uh, and I'm so glad you buzzed can, off that. Candy enjoyed the jism as well. I'm sure. I bet you did. Spunking into a lighthouse. Oh. <laughs> What's he doing? What do you think What's he's that doing? Noise! Oh God! <laughs> Bashing oh, the bishop. God, <laughs> right. Let's 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 get into the uh, the meat because two big shows dropped this week. Um, we'll start with the show that you can't complete yet. We'll start with uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. I want to give you my thoughts because you know, listener, my thoughts on Star Wars lately, and I'm down on Star Wars lately. I fucking love these two episodes. Mm-hmm. I these absolutely love them. As you can above oh yeah, I'm not going to spoil yeah. anything because I've not seen anything. You. I'm not going to spoil any anything I talk about from now on. I think this is a return to a form of Star Wars I haven't seen in decades. I think it's phenomenal. There's something about you and McGregor. He is the best thing in the prequel trilogy. Yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd like anyone to argue with me on that one. Did you camp. watch the recap that they offered at the beginning? Yes, sensational. That is Beautiful. The, the remade best it. way to watch 
the, the, the prequels. Did of you know Star the, 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 through that the remastered, <laughs> the remastered uh, moments from the original prequel and made it look modern. <laughs> Look fucking good. It looked really good, uh, but yeah. this, th- yeah, there's definitely something about you and McGregor that you can't take your eyes off him at all. Um, he is uh, Alec Guinness. He is obviously. He always did. He, he did say he based his impression on him, didn't he? From mm. start yeah, to finish. And this does seem like an early Alec Guinness, and that's what I like about it. There's some. Mm. And without spoiling to without spoiling anything really, it's not what I I was scared that it's just going to be stuck on a planet like we were. We were book of um, Django Fett, Bob, Boba Fett, sorry, Boba Fett, book, yeah. book of Boba Fett. I thought oh, I hope we're not stuck on a planet. We're not. We're not stuck mm. on a planet. That's the only spoil I'm going to say. We're not stuck on a planet. The the villains, uh, classic Empire, Star Wars baddies. It's just I don't know something. Did, did you did you watch them both, Candy? Yeah, Re- uh, you, I'm saying you... really enjoyed them. But I'm, I'm also going into it without having seen any of the most recent um, Disney series on Star mm-hmm, Wars, and mm-hmm. this is the only one really that I've been interested in seeing. And it really does just kick off straight from. Um, it doesn't Revenge feel like those other shows at all. No, it doesn't. The other shows, the other the other shows had a lot of moments where. A character, and in both shows, a character without a face, <laughs> with a mask on, staring at the camera, trying to do, trying to emote without having a face. Like I don't think Mandalorian's bad. I think Mandal- Mandalorian got better as it went on, massively. Yeah, I didn't stick with it. That that was that was Mandal- kept improving. Mandal- it's very good when when the story started kicking. When it was like mission yes. mission of the week. Mission, yeah, it was like this is kind of good. fun. But then when he actually yeah. had a purpose and yeah. And you, yeah, season two of Mandalorian relation, is really relationships good. Relationships with Grogu and, and other characters, that's when it kicked off. And, yeah, it yeah. did, it did. Yeah. Agreed. And, I mean, it's, it's and telling Book, of, Book best, of Boba Fett was the last two episodes the were good. The best two episodes <laughs> were the ones that featured Mando. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. But th- this is like, all right, I, I get why, again, why they dropped a two, two-parter, because it's like one little narrative. Yeah. Um, there's just something about, there's a foreboding in this film, like, if you've seen the trailer, you know there's a foreboding menace there. You know there's a, a, a Darth Vader somewhere in the galaxy. And there is a forebodingness about it. Do you know what I mean? You can see it, can't you, Candy? All about it. It's just, we all know he's there. Mm. And it's frightening because he's still one of the best villains ever created. Um, but the villains in this, the Inquisitors, they're pretty fucking good and all. Mm. I really like them. They remind me... Of a better fleshed out versions of the ones in Jedi Fallen Order, because they had Inquisitors in that as well. Oh, that's right. Uh, they, they were a lot better than them ones. <laughs> it's just, I, don't, I don't know. There's something about it. the cinematography is way better. It's not. It's not doing that. Like there are scenery shots and nice panning shots, but it's not lingering on them like um, Book of Boba Fett did. Fuck me. There's so much of Book of Boba Fett where it's just a, a bald man staring out into a desert. <laughs> Literally for fucking <laughs> an hour. I, just, oh, I think so it was a dull. better sequel to the prequels or prequels. Yeah, prequel to the yeah, most no. recent films than the, the most um, recent set of three films were. I think it's I think it's better than those for sure. So far. it's believable. Yeah, that's what oh, I, I think about it. Like what the, what what they what they want in Obi Wan to do. It's believable how you're getting him to do these things because. All for all we knew after um, after the third Star Wars, he just stayed and watched Luke Skywalker in yeah. a cave. I mean, it's amazing what you can do when you actually sit down and think about what story you want to tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I think if you've got any love for Star Wars, I can already tell people are going to adore this. If you've fallen off Star Wars a little bit, like I have of, of recent years, barring Rogue One, because I thought Rogue One was incredible. Um, I think this is going to kind of reignite that spark again because it feels much it's not trying to do that theme it's not a western a space western anymore it's back to fantasy um amazing visuals just fucking ewan mcgregor being ewan mcgregor he's sensational do you think um so what you're saying about ewan mcgregor obviously (laughs) uh channeling alec guinness do you think that now this is near enough 20 years on just shy of 20 years from the end of 
the prequels that mm. it lends itself better that we've got an older more yes. like wiser looking uh, Obi-Wan whereas yeah. they were, he was still young then trying to play <clears throat> like, if you look at the actual time gap over those three films that's meant to take place over some like 30 odd years yeah yet, yeah. yet Obi-Wan the only thing that happens is he grows a beard and he <laughs> yeah. doesn't even though he's kind of channeling, channeling, channeling Alec Guinness there, you don't yeah. really see it. You kind of look at it and go, how does he turn into that? Yeah. You think yeah. that now you can see... By the time you hit New Hope, he's it. looking an old man. There's this massive old man. Yeah. gap. Short white hair, There's... short white beard. Yeah. And yes. you, can see it. you can see it in this already. Yeah. You really can. You can see that stoicism that he has. You can see... It, it's kind of... It, it, it sounds strange, but it makes sense. He's channeling Alec Guinness and he's channeling um, Qui Gon Jin in a, in a bit because he was his master, he was his mentor. I'm seeing that Qui Gon Jin element to him. Yeah, I can see and that. There's just can you, I don't can you know see a cameo from him in this that they've kept secret as a fast ghost. Um, the, the, I could, I could. It's ludicrous. It, 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 in in the in the recap, it does make note and it lingers on it a little bit where Yoda says to uh, Obi Wan. We found a way to communicate with Qui Gon. Do you know mm. what they did in? So it lingered on that a little bit, but we haven't seen nothing of that yet. I think we'll Ca- get that mm. at some point. L- l- there's l- l- yeah, there's nods, but it just I don't know. There's, there's something really good about it, and I think yeah, I'm I'm glad to be liking Star Wars again. It's re- <laughs> it's like a load. It's like oh, thank fuck for that. I'm not a weirdo because <laughs> mm. everyone loves Star Wars, and some people are blind by Star Wars. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like some people say, Han Solo, uh, Solo, whatever it's called, is a, an incredible film. I'm like, have you watched it? Have you really it's, watched it's it? Fun. It's fun. I enjoyed it's, it, but it, it's, I enjoyed it's it. fun. It's not as I good as it. It's incredible. No, no, it's, it's better than the prequels. No. <laughs> Mate, was it though? <laughs> most things are better than the prequels. I, I, I think would disagree. Solo. Right, exactly. I think Solo's better than the prequels. Mm. I, yeah. I wouldn't say that. The third prequel was good. I thought. The second, mm. not so much. It was much. okay. It was okay. The second one's the terrible. Acti- the second the one's the worst in the one out of the whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Natalie yeah, Portman's nipples were the only standout from the prequels. <laughs> My God. <laughs> My God. Out. I thought we'd get through this without one of those. But yeah, um, <laughs> I, I really liked it, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's just a, an episode a week now, isn't it, going yeah. forward, which is, which is absolutely fine, which will tie me lovingly into, um, is it Miss Marvel next we've got? I think we have, haven't we? And that's the next yeah. one. Yeah, in, into Miss Marvel next. So Disney Plus again, bringing many, the goods. How many will be one episodes are there? Is it just six? Six, I think. Six. Yeah. Six, yeah. That's nice. That's that, Again, that's that's all you need. Don't drag it out. Yeah. Mm. Don't drag it out. Don't drag it well, out. One thing I but will the, say before we move on well, is, um, mm. the, and it's not ruining anything, but the final scene of the second episode, oh, I, j- my mouth was just open. Yeah, my, and my, my heart was. just jumped out. <laughs> My face. I basically. did not expect I, it, me. <laughs> I know. I had to rewind it about. I think I Sorry. rewound it about three times to watch it again. I was like, Oh, oh you watched it, Big. I didn't know you watched it. Sorry, mate. I didn't ask. Yeah, I, I said at the beginning. Have you got any thoughts in it? Then come on. No, I, I, I totally agree with everything you said so far. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah, that, that, exactly that, that, the that same final thing. bit. That final bit. That's like my heart went into my throat, and I was like, "Fuck!" It's scary. I felt eight years old again. Like when I first started getting into Star Wars, I was like, "This is it. This is what we needed." It feels like I don't know who's creating this. I don't know who's doing it, but it feels like they get it. Exactly. That's why I don't. I don't want to go on about it too much because we talked about it before. But like Sticky says about the the Force Awakens, I really enjoyed that mm. because I did. It was mm. an imitation of the New Hope, which is what everyone remembers that 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 adventure. It's that a fantasy, sincere that form romp. of flattery, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I thought they were going to be doing with those last Star Wars movies was go back to that sort of feeling of fun and then it didn't quite yeah, They didn't work have a plan for that last those last three films. No. <laughs> they didn't but have these a shows plan where I personally thought Mandalorian absolutely nailed it. I haven't finished the book of Boba Fett yet. I need to go and just finish that. The off, ending's but, best bit, mate. <laughs> but I've just been looking forward to this stuff if they can nail it and yeah, I'm really happy with Kenobi so this far. Is, for, for, for what it is and my final thought on it is this is the first time we've got a main character show. Obi-Wan Kenobi is a main character and a powerful main character and it's just, yeah, I just think it's sublime and I'm so looking forward to how it's going to 
fizzle and out. Actually, and... just thinking about it, I think McGregor wants to prove a point as well because of the flack that yes. the original movie's got. Oh, I he's proven it, it so he, far. He wants, this to, he wants this to be a success. Yeah. Mm. Of course, none of it makes sense when you consider that uh, one of the kids was was hidden with a Skywalker. And yeah. Obi-Wan kid, Nate, changed his name to Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. He's so stupid. He just kind of, just kind of mentioned it. You just got to, got, you just got to. Uh, like, it's like, like just forget. Your last, your, your last name's Kenobi. Are you related to Obi Wan? No, my name's Ben. No, Ben Kenobi. <laughs> never, never heard of Obi Wan. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, never heard of him. This lightsaber? No, this is not a lightsaber. What about the Skywalkers? <laughs> not related. No, never heard of them. It's just, just a common name. It's a common name. Don't worry about it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, technically, they wouldn't Walker. have the, they wouldn't have the surname Skywalker, would they? Because they weren't Skywalkers. Um, the family yeah, weren't because it was it was, it, it was his mum, wasn't it? Was it was Anakin's mum married someone? Yeah, would have been you the think dad's Anakin name. would be. You think that Anakin slash Vader would be able to put two and two together? You? Of course he would. He's been there. <laughs> he knows where it is. <laughs> he literally was there. He calls himself Skywalker, so he must. Yeah, he does. He kept, he's kept that name. He's kept so. his name. Yeah. Yeah, it's still yeah, my favourite bit wrong. when you think about the original Star Wars is that when he's got Princess Leia on his ship and so Darth Vader has no idea that's his daughter, yet he can work out the feelings of the Force and everything <laughs> else. He has no idea that that person he's got in front of him is his daughter. I think it's fantastic. Uh, that was the problem with him writing things as he went along. But yeah. by the by, yeah. that's just... Anyway, that. a big the, the, the main thing that's come out this week for a lot of people, Stranger Things 4. Part one. <laughs> Who's seen it? I've seen two nope. episodes. Six episodes. You've seen two episodes. I've seen them all. Of course you have. Of course I have. And? Of course, of course you have. have. Right. Um, a few people have asked me my thoughts on this. Um, Candy, you give me our thoughts first. I'm really enjoying so it. I'm, I don't think I'm enjoying it any more or less than previous episodes. What I do really love is how much it's basically a horror show now it's such a homage so to 80s horror um even it's, like it's, it's uh, nightmare on elm street isn't it it's nightmare on elm street it's silence of the lambs it's yep. yeah so that part of it i'm, oh, I'm really, really enjoying it, no it really is oh i mean it's ramped up the horror something there's always been that like even in the first series you had the demigorgon was always like horrific and there's a lot of blood and stuff but the end of like the Episode one and two, you're like fuck me, this is uh, <laughs> yeah. this is push the limits now. Yeah. What rating um, is it? Do we know? Is it a fifteen or fifteen? Fifteen. No one's shagging in it. No. Yeah. Yeah. No swears. No shagging. So you're allowed to get away with it. <laughs> they shagged in that one of the seasons, season one. They were shagging in that. And there were kids. no boobs though. Yeah. So I think it's only if there's no boobs. boobies. Yeah. No boobs. No willies. <laughs> but yeah, I um. I I smashed it all in two days basically because I really fucking loved it yes. and I couldn't stop watching it. I could not stop watching it at all. Um, my biggest takeaway is we have started to drift away from the kids from the first few seasons now, and it's about the young adults that we we, we knew. It's not really the little kids' tale anymore, is it? No. It's the uh, the guy. With the eighties hair, I love it so much. I don't remember people's names because they've all got generic names. Nancy, she's probably the main character in this now, isn't she? In a way, uh, yeah, a and a way. lot of new, a lot of new characters as well. You could argue yeah. that one of the new characters is more or less the main character. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's another thing that I really like that they touched on the kind of satanic panic of the eighties as well. Yeah, with the, uh, like, the the rock and roll guys, uh, rock and roll the guy. Hellfire oh. Club. Dungeons yeah, the and whole Dragons like, is evil. like jocks versus nerds saying that like Dungeons and Dragons yeah. is satanic and stuff like that. Yeah. Did did anyone right, I'm sorry, but did anyone else feel a little bit drawn in by that like, Dungeons and Dragons now we've been doing hours? Yeah. Like No, I was like, still on the side of the jocks. Honestly, no, when he when he, <laughs> <laughs> when he rolled that he rolls that first dice and it's like it's not high enough. I was like I said to Kate, you need at least a sixteen to beat to <laughs> hit him. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it gets the critical twenty. I was like, "That's a big hit." That. <laughs> what I can say is, um, I mean, it's in the trailer as well. Vecna, the main baddie in this, from beginning to end, is fucking 
terrifying. Oh, the digital effects on him as well. Just how everything, every all the tendrils and everything Slivering is and moving oh, all the time. Fucking is his, is his main face CGI, is that prosthetic? Because that looks like... A bit it, of both. Yeah, it looks like there's at least some prosthetics going on, which is nice because it like looks his nostri- really... He, he's like, because he's not really got nostrils, but he's, he's breathing CGI, but it's the, the actor that plays yeah, he is uh, in it. He is in it. It's he's really well it. done. He looks great. He really does and also, great. also, don't Google who the actor is. Just I already know. Yeah, I did, I did oh, that. Fuck. Internet, yeah. innit? Fuck. <laughs> Internet, yeah. I won't then. That's fine. I'll go and do blind. it. Yeah, uh, I, I, there's something about this. It just makes me feel like, like Star Wars. It just makes me feel young. And I, I, there is a cameo in this that made me whoop. Mm-hmm. Um, you know which cameo it is, don't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it made me whoop. I was like, yes, they've got him. They've got him. There he is. That's, that, that's my man. That's my boy. And everything about this is so fucking pure and great. It's, it's super scary goonies. It's... But only Goonies for a little bit, because the kids are really second fiddle in this. The kids are there for exposition. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to let them know about the Dungeons and Dragons character. The the young adults, Nancy and the Steve. Sex, Steve, thank you, Steve. They're the main ones. They're the big one. And I don't know. There's something about the upside down now that I think they've nailed that look of what it should look like. Because it looks, it, you won't remember this, but it looks a lot different than the first season. It looks a lot different. It wasn't what it is in this. And I don't know, the art style's fantastic. The side plot that all I'm going to say is in a different country, it's engrossing. That's probably the weakest aspect for me. It's, mm, just, that's, it's, it's an obvious... For me, that's the plot that kind of to get the... Relief, it, isn't it? It's the plot to get the parents away. That's mm. what that plot is. That's, that's, we need another reason to get... The parents away. It's making me think that they shouldn't. I, already, I'm only two episodes in that they shouldn't have bothered with that. And yep. the ending yep. should have been, if you yep. know what I mean, like. What you yep, think yep, it is. Yep. You, you yeah. bang on, you bang on money because the resolution to that is all right. But all the while, especially the last three episodes, when it goes to the other country, you just want to get back, get back, get back to America. I want to talk. <laughs> I want. I want. I want to know what's happening. I want to know what's happening. Fuck that. I'm not bothered. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I I froze you can I ask wise. if is that it now? Have no. they ended no. it? No. <laughs> no. This, this is season part five. One. Well, second this is part half, one of yeah. season four. So, so in first of July we get the second part of season four. Then we get the third part. Then we get season five. Yeah. This. The last two episodes, so this is the first seven, isn't it? Then there's two more episodes to come Mm. in July, which are about two and a two hours long or something. They're ridiculous. They're like two two movies. The last last episode's a full movie length. Yeah. That I watched. It's like two and a half hours. Seven and, uh, sorry, eight and nine are long. I do, I do like the um, the, the stuff with Eleven. They're really fleshing out her character and making her more human in this because. For a while, she was the Deus Ex Machina, wasn't she? She yeah. was the the MacGuffin, and she, now um, Millie Bobby Brown's like she's a woman now. Do you know what I mean? And she's showing, of of she's showing signs of being a, a woman. She's she's lived in the quote unquote real world for years now, hasn't she? In the in the narrative, and you can see it, and it's 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 lovely to see. But again, the kids are proper second fiddle to the it's main. It's really uh, weird to see. Pictures of them from season one when they were babies, and see and see them now. I can't believe like, how big they are now. Yeah, it's it's, it's so they're, weird. They're men and women now, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I Who still call them 30? kids. Yeah, yeah, it does. I still call them kids though, because they are still kids. Aren't no, they're, they're still, still like under in eighteen. High school. Aren't they? In the, in, yeah, yeah. In the, in the show, the over eighteen ones, the ones that should be in college. That is, that it's their their season so far, isn't it? It's about. I, them. I did en- without going to spoilers. I did enjoy what Elle did at the end of episode two. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, fucking right!" Absolutely deserved <laughs> yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So did I, mate. So yeah, it's if if now I will what if people have never seen this strange things at all. I will because I know a lot of kids that are bang into it, but it's not for kids. No, my kids it's know really what strange things kids. is, but they don't. They've never seen yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Them watch mine it. have never seen it. 
Yeah. They know what the demagogue is and stuff like that. It's like, I'm, I'm glad you know what it is and you've not seen it because it's horrific. Especially in this. There's some mm. scenes in this that are gross. Like, horrendous. I, I would be fine to let them watch it at 12, 13. Like, cause I've seen, I, I've I seen, I, think I, I watched Nightmare on Elm Street when I was like 10. Yeah, like, do you know what I mean? how like, fucked up you are. Not, <laughs> like, <laughs> I think kids, I think as we now, as parents go, oh, I won't let my kid watch that. You know how, you only know how good your child is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what your child can take. There's certain people who know that their child at 12, 13 couldn't handle this. And my, my mate's Street. kids, my mate's kids were screaming at Paddington. Because it frightened him that they were talking there. That's not even a joke. Yeah, like, just you know I mean, like because because the CGI on Paddington looks that good. Yeah, he thought that was a real talking bear. We're like now I'm at the stage where Amelia wants to watch Lord of the Rings with me. The full oh, like, get her on ex- that extended things. She's not. She's seen the trailer. She's not bothered by the Black Riders and the the orcs and Orakai. Like, do you know what yeah. I mean? Get so I kind of know that when she is getting to a teenage years, I could, I could start showing her some eighteens. And stuff. And I think. I mean, I mean, my this. my warning's also to adults because there's at least four points in this in this show that made me jump, like shit myself. I went fuck it hell, you know what I mean? Because I'm I'm like really close to my monitor when I'm watching it, <laughs> and I did look, like, oh! and yeah. I, I, I didn't expect that because it wasn't never it was never, it was, never <laughs> it was never scary back the the first three seasons. You know what I mean? It was more interesting, and I do like. The Dungeons and Dragons take on it. Now I do know a little bit more on Dungeons and Dragons. I can't believe how much it is Dungeons and Dragons. I know, Literally, I feel everything, the same thing. Everything yeah. they do. It's fucking mental. It's like, it's as if there's dice checks every time they make a decision, do you know what I mean? It's fucking wild, but I, I, I think it's fantastic. And if they keep producing stuff of this quality, it is hard for me to cancel Netflix because this is fucking. Brilliant. I have to oh. say, I went. I didn't have. I don't want to say I didn't have high hopes for it, but I was very careful to kind of manage my expectations because I know Netflix has a tendency, or well, not ne- not just Netflix. <laughs> sorry, a lot of shows have a tendency to kind of trail off once they, once they know they're on a, onto a good thing. It's almost as if they try too hard and fuck it. So I was like, oh God, is this going to happen? But I'm really pleased to say that I don't think that's going to. From start to finish, it's spent the. Thirty million pound an episode. I don't think they would have allowed this to be fucked. Yeah, the mm. last episode is probably the best episode they've produced. It's sensational. It's re- and I think people are going to talk about that last episode for a long time afterwards. Oh, I mean, when you think of the the very first series, how different that was to everything else that was around at the time. I liked yeah. what they did with that. I th- I thought it was excellent. Uh, mm. I do, it wasn't different to what Candy. we watched when we were kids. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the thing. It was bringing it all back. I, I think season three trailed off for me a little bit, and I was hoping that this picks I've heard up. Heard that, but I never heard a little heard bit. That. I loved three. It was oh, two. Yeah, right? it, was, it was two. Not so much. The, there was bits. Of, there were bits of the first season that was a bit, but two. I liked it, and three. I really liked three. I really did. Yeah. There's a lot of characters I loved it in it. There's, it was the summer, wasn't it? And everyone was at the pool and stuff like that. It was just cool. I don't know. I had a good vibe to it. And this one is just. Bleak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From start th- to finish. Do you think it's done that thing? And I think Harry Potter, the film, the Harry Potter films did it quite well, where if maybe a kid was 12, 13, 14 when they first started watching the first season of Netflix, they've, uh, of Strange Things, sorry, it almost as if they kind of grown up with the show. So yeah. the, the show is, is doing becoming that. more adult for that, yeah. for that specific reason. Yeah, definitely. It's like they, these are the kids in the show growing older. You as an audience, if you were a teenager and you started this, you're growing older. You don't want to be. You, you want to grow with them and experience things that are a bit more exactly. frightening and more dangerous. It's yeah, yeah, definitely. I think the Duffer Brothers know what they're doing because the the fans of the the time as well, and the the episodes that are directed by Sean Levy are probably some of the better ones because they're mm. the character episodes, and you get you get you get a lot more expansive character like expositions and stuff like that and less other country stuff because <laughs> that really I, I hope these next two episodes that come out these feature length ones are not based over that because i'm just not that bothered about the adult adults the 40 year olds i'm not bothered about them i don't give a fuck yeah, you know what I mean? rider. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah i'm not bothered about when i want a rider who gives a fuck yeah. 
But it just it does yeah. hit that 80s feel, doesn't it? Like when the music, it's like, oh, like a bit of synthy <sighs> music in and you're watching things, you're like... It's those panning shots when mm. it's sunny, it's morning, it's sunny morning and it's panning into an high school. Boom. I'm, Yellow I'm, bus I'm, is coming in. I'm sat here now thinking, I really want to go watch The Lost Boys again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, making man. Me wanna, it's yes. making me want to go like, kind of just, we want to go watch Have a, a deep film dive. Like that. Yeah, have one of those films like that. Because it, you know, it takes from that kind of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's nice to see... Um, these guys like just about ready to hit college years, which is a great segue <laughs> to the main topic event. We are, did you see that? You see it? That's, That's what you really call good. Gonzo podcasting. <laughs> the bleeding edge of podcastery. We're oh, talking okay. about college years. It's my episode. I thought of this idea on the fly last week. We did school days. Before Candy was born, because um, <clears throat> you were born when you joined the podcast. Yes. Um, we talked <laughs> about many, many things about being in school and being little rebels, especially me and Stig. Me and Stig seem to be the naughty guys. Oh, I've got some naughty stories. <laughs> <laughs> we were naughty. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, we're just going to do a, a, just a little chitter chatter about college days. I mean, I, I'm assuming Gadget was probably a good boy at school because he's quite intelligent now and he's very good at what he does. <laughs> and look at the state Pro- of us. <laughs> yeah, we're a fucking mess. <laughs> we're a mess. So I'm going to start, I think, with the person whom I believe had quite an interesting college life. By college listeners as well. I'm, I, you might not have been to college, but I'm talking you leave school at 16-ish before you go to uni at 1928 that those weird twilight years you're an adult now in 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 england and britain especially we're allowed in pubs and stuff at this point that kind of thing so biggie what did you do in the mm-hmm. workhouse <laughs> <laughs> i thought we were just gonna have a more open conversation this week to be honest, i mean gonna, we, uh... we, we we are we are we, we are but we can't we, we, we are gonna do that but i just want to i'm gonna ask each of you a little question first i just want to know like a, a few sentences of what you what you did at college and why you did it. Not not your hijinks. Right. We're going to do the hijinks later. No, that's cool. Um, so yeah, when I finished my GCSEs, um, I went straight to art college in North London, and I did a two year BTEC Ooh, and national diploma in, in, in uh, BTEC national diploma in art and design. And I, I think I mentioned it before on the podcast where the first year. We covered everything to do with art and design, and then the second year we had to specialise a uh, specific subject, so we were able to diverse slightly. So I did fine art and graphic design. Um, but so yeah, why aren't you I, doing I, I the form... show, the show art, the podcast art for fuck's sake? <laughs> why am I doing a, it? I'm not I qualified. Done artwork for such a long time, and <laughs> B, you do such a great job, and Candy is awesome. I am oh, still but, waiting. Uh, you, you said you did caricatures, didn't you? I'm still waiting for hours. Yeah, I did, yeah. You do, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I, I literally, did. I, I haven't <laughs> done anything like that for years. That, that's my problem. I don't have the passion or time for it. But I'd love mm. to um, get involved with having some digital software and try and get my head around you doing it that so way. So you, yeah, you, exactly. you, you had an arty college upbringing then? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I, I, then. I, I, let's, let's, let's move on to my, what... Uh, oh, God, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No one. I was just literally going to say the the two years that I did at college were really special for me because I came out of my shell and I formed some very close friendships there, which we still keep in touch to this day. We just obviously don't see each other that much. I can love but that. It was a really important change for me coming out of school, going into um, that sort of age, like you say, that change in my life. And it started at art college, Big without a doubt. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Candy, what do you do at college? Uh, well. And why? I also came out of my shell, but I fucking shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> my shell Should was have my stayed an egg forever. Absolutely. <laughs> um, subject, so I've got a bit of a funny one. It's not really funny. It's awful looking back. But the first college I went to, which was A-levels, I did art and photography and IT. But it was All kind the easy of- ones. Well, how dare you? Well, firstly, my IT teacher never showed up, but it was about halfway through <laughs> the courses. It was, I didn't get kicked out, but it was strongly suggested that I don't come back ever. Mm-hmm. And they gave me mm-hmm. all my stuff in a box. So off I went. 
Um, is it you're making this school look bad? It was. I think it might have been the, the case because they don't they don't like to expel people. But there's nothing no, they can they do don't. if people leave. So that they strongly suggested I leave. The second college I went to was in Swindon, and I went straight into doing an HND, which is I think it's like mm-hmm. a half a degree or something. And I did that in um, illustration and multimedia. And I fucking loved it. It was so, I had so much fun at Swindon College. And it's got a really awful like, reputation because it is just a college. It's not a uni. Um, but the mm-hmm. teachers there were so amazing and so good. One, one of my teachers was a student from the previous year who um, was probably one of the most intelligent people on the planet. He lives in, um, I want to say Kuala Lumpur or, or somewhere now, and he basically owns his own wow. animation studio. But he was teaching us, and he, he was absolutely batshit crazy. He would just take us to the pub to do lessons. He was brilliant. He's he was so intelligent like that him. his, his um, intel actually wanted to employ him around the age of fourteen, but because he was a little bit mentally unstable, bless him, his parents wouldn't let him. He's just one of those <laughs> just evil geniuses. But he's just oh, he's amazing. Savant. Yeah, but mm. oh, I really mm. loved, and we we really did get up to some absolute chaos. But I'll go into that we'll later. We'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to. Stig, what do you do at college, boy? Um, why? college, why? Well, my um, the way our school was structured was slightly different, which I'll get into a bit after this. But in terms of subject, okay. um, I just did IT and design tech. I did IT because I wanted to do it at GCSE levels. I was always yeah. into IT, and yeah. for whatever reason, our school the GCSE level only offered a certain amount of places for IT. Don't know why. Oh, right. Uh, and I wasn't only for computers. I, I put my name down for it. No, we had loads. It was, that's the annoying thing. It was like it's weird. four computer labs. Um, so I put my name down for it and just didn't get on the shortlist. So I was like, oh, as soon as I got there, I'm going to do, I'm going to do IT. I want to do IT because I enjoyed fucking yeah. around on computers. Probably shouldn't have bothered. It's a pointless. Don't do anything with IT now. <laughs> pointless definitely, endeavor. Definitely should have done it. Literally, when I did, when I went to see the teacher about what subjects I could do, I should do. He's like, we've got really good marks in English and this because why don't you carry on doing English? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I should on English and media studies, but I did, uh, I did it and design tech. Um, oh, you could have been a journalist by now, mate. Could have been journalist, could have been working <laughs> in film, you know? Yeah. But, uh, Fuck. yeah, anyway, they, they were fine. It was a bit of a laugh. Like we, we had a, I, you know, I got top grades in, in it, in it, but the, just the, the lessons were a laugh. <laughs> uh, DT was quite good fun. I did a bit of an engineering side course, through DT as well. Um, I made my own guitar as part Did of one know? of my projects. Yeah. Um, annoyingly, though, I got a, um, so I made a guitar from a piece, a massive piece of mahogany wood designed. The, Ooh, I designed yeah. the shape of it and I put it in. I cheated a little bit because I took a fretboard from an existing guitar and put it's it on. Fine, because it's fine. The more I read into it, it's like you have to have <laughs> the frets. They had to be precision. In yeah, you have to go. wax them and stuff like, it's like that. Otherwise, it, it, it won't make the sound. Because so I was like, oh, "Fuck yeah. this! I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, design it, get the the um, Franken to cut it all out, and uh, you know, and do, you do everything." Um, the most annoying thing about that was I had to paint it in the end because the piece I got as I was route routering router router it's a router router. <laughs> I was also using the router to... No, it's a router. We call it a router for that here. It's Americans have, like, <laughs> fucked up my language. I don't know what this tool is, mate. I've never used a tool in my life. A router <laughs> is one where you, you kind of put it on and you can... And it's got, like, a little drill <gasps> on it. Yeah, and you can yeah. cut ships yeah. out. I've seen them. I'm joking. And as I was doing that to cut the holes for all the other electronic parts and stuff, it split the wood and it split the <gasps> guitar in half. Oh, oh no. shit. So I had to glue it back together, fill it in, and... This nice piece of mahogany wood just looks shit. So in the end, I tried to prime it and paint yeah. it. Uh, it didn't work, but that doesn't matter. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, design tech, IT, nothing really exciting. Uh, good laughs okay. and lessons, but um, yeah, it was mainly outside of school. Yeah, we'll get on that in a bit. So <laughs> what I did at college, a lot, not a lot of people know this. Um, I did public services which had the ultimate end goal of becoming, believe it or not, a police officer. Um, (laughs) I know. I know. (laughs) I know. Can you imagine? How did that work out for you? (laughs) He didn't. (laughs) 
after the first year and after a certain amount of events that I will discuss later, I was similar to Candy, um, asked to leave. <laughs> oh, <laughs> suggested you don't return. To, suggested I don't return. And then I went on to do a music, um, not a degree, a music thing, a college, a, a community Diploma? college. Uh, Diploma, national diploma, that's it, thank you. I cared about it that much. I passed it, but it was performance-based, and I, it's the only thing I can do, music. <laughs> but to get to that, you had to do one, like, what we called a boring topic, uh, a boring subject as well, just to secure your placement in this college, this community college. And the, I was looking at the list. I was like, okay, okay. And then I saw one, and it said, law. I went, do you know what? I'm going to do law. <laughs> so I signed myself up to law lessons. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that for now. But yeah, <laughs> hijinks with that as well. But yeah, I did a mu- I did music, obviously, because I'm a fucking virtuoso, as we can all tell and we've heard. Um, but yeah, let's get up to some hijinks, because that's what people are here for. The people are here for all the stuff, the extracurricular activities that we mm, had, the stuff that start. we shouldn't have been doing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was yeah. happening um, at the college anyway. Everyone used to smoke so much weed. It was ridiculous, mm-hmm. even in the refectory. And the teachers. It was just... Yeah. I used to, yeah. Buy, my I, cigs, I used to buy my cigs off my teacher. I wasn't part of the any kind of weed smoking crew. I knew people who did it. I just... And, I, and you know, I often... You know, every now and again, if there was some around, I would have He's some. He's a joker, that. Yeah. I was definitely the kind <laughs> that just, like, took off other people. Because, you know, I'd have a part of a joint or something. But I'd never... I wasn't part of people I'm who so did stoned. that. so stoned. We just... We we drank more than we smoked. I did smoke cigarettes. Oh, yeah. and drank, drank. But um, see, what I meant about oh, our school pod. was um, our school was really weird. So we had year seven to nine at one school, and okay. then you moved across the town to go to the what is called the college, North Alton College. And just, you did just for our um, American listeners, year I, year I was seven, get you're about that. eleven year old. <laughs> year All seven right. to nine is is the eleven. To thirteen, yeah. So eleven, no, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen. Th- it's fourteen. So eleven to fourteen, yeah. And then, and then you did you not? You did your last two GCSE years up at the college. So yeah. it often felt like you were at the college before you actually were, because mm-hmm. you were there mm-hmm. with the college kids. You were there with the bigger with the bigger uh, oh, teenagers. They moved you across to a different because they moved you to a different school. So for us, when That's we so talk, odd. so when we talk about college between my friends. It's from the age of 14, not 16. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we have things like um, those two years I was... Did you have to wear Crazy uniform, Lego right? sessions. Yes. Those two years you wore a uniform. Then when you, if you stayed and on you and didn't did your A-levels, you didn't have okay. to. But okay. those two years, um, I was kind of not a complete bastard, but <laughs> definitely in the middle. Like I knew where to draw I'm the a line, bastard. <laughs> but I did things that shouldn't I shouldn't have done. So, for example, uh, I, like I when I was in maths class, the lads I used to sit next to in maths class in maths class were distracting me so much I was falling behind. So I knew to move away from them and go sit yeah. somewhere else and concentrate that kind of thing. Yeah. But when I was in my science class, the lads I was with, I was having such a fun time with. I ended up getting kicked out and moved into a different science class. It's worth the sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I got moved. Yeah. yeah, I got moved in science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, even though, do you know what? It wasn't even me. One of the lads that I was with was one of the worst, and for whatever reason, he had the he just could sweet talk teachers, so he didn't get told <laughs> I off. I like them, kid. They were me, best ones. They me were, and, me and the other lad got told off more. I once literally got told off, and we we used to have an ASCO called um, Recorded Warning, which was Ooh, a written, which scary. was. A, yeah, which was a warning that you cl- the teacher would write and send to your form tutor. And then if you got so many recorded warnings, you would get detention. And if What's you got a form, form tutor. Did you never have a form tutor? Like a no. like a class that you went to at the start of the day where you registered and you had a teacher who No, just registered what? in each class. Really? So we yeah, yeah, form tutors for us were like it was your you had a form, like so. Through... And then they just split off into lessons after. Yeah, mm. so every morning we'd meet in a classroom and we'd have a mm. teacher who looked after us as a form. And as that form, you would form the basis of like sports teams and sports day yeah, yeah, and yeah. things like that. 
might, yeah, we, we, mate, we might have done, but I just can't remember. But you would get, yeah, you, so you'd get recorded one and sent back to them. And, and if you got so many, you oh, would right. detention. If you got so many, you would let her home. Then you start to get to suspensions and eventually expulsion. Like, it, you had to get a lot to get. But yeah, I like the, in that science class, I once got a recorded one for literally, we were doing quiet learning because the teacher had had enough of everyone and basically said, everyone be quiet <laughs> and sit down and do your work. And I got up, walked across the room, picked my ruler up from a, that my mate was borrowing, didn't say a word, went and sat back down, carried on. Stuart, we got a warning, out the class. Wow! Picking like the ruler up, I bet you like, yeah. that's it? Yeah, yeah. That's, I only did this. That's I only the point. A ruler. That's how bad I'd been in that class, that even walking across the room silently to get a, a it's ruler. one step too far for him. Was one step too far with me in that class, and eventually I just got kicked out. But we... Um, <laughs> Bad boy. We used to do a few things in those years in school. Um, I wanted to bring up just because... In my college years, I was a bit more mature, and I didn't kind of do these things. Outside of school mm. was a different matter, but in school was... Oh, I, God. <laughs> so we used to have a gym. Uh, we had two gyms at school, and one of them was a new big sports hall they'd built on the side of the school where you play indoor football, basketball, netball, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And we had an old school gym which had ropes, uh, wooden ladders. Apparatus. Yeah, um, and they stored the crash mats there for like high jump and stuff like that. And the way to get into that room, just push the door, because the lock did not <gasps> work. So you could play in it? Yep. Oh. So, but... It usually meant that whoever was at the front of the line would just go up to it and push the door open or boot the door open. And the one the one day I just walked up, booted the door open, we walked in, mess, messing around, teacher comes in, catches us. And then they were like, you've broken the door. The door was already broken. And we were all said, the lock's already always been broken. How do you think we got in and out? Like, it's always been broken. No, one of you's broken the door, own up to it, who was it? And I was like, well, I don't want everyone else to get in trouble. <laughs> And because it was me that day, it just happened to be me that day. Could have been anyone. Snitches Could have been anyone in that group. Well. Just had to be me. So I was like, right, it was me. Tried to charge me like £130 to fix the lock. You, a young boy? <laughs> yeah, never paid it. Sent me the bill. Ow. Gave me the bill to take home to give to my parents. I was like, in the bin that goes. <laughs> yeah, fuck like, that. I used, yeah, I, used like... to I used to adore. I used to adore when they used to send things home to your parents. Hey, make sure they get this. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that was nowadays one, like, they email them. <laughs> that was a, a, a so that kind of took us away from like oh, we can't go in the gym anymore. Like they they did they, they ended up putting new doors on there so you couldn't get in. That you didn't pay for. No, I didn't pay from there. Fuck. <laughs> so we started to go into just classrooms and play cards. And um, innocently enough, just sat there with our, with no our gambling. sandwiches and everything. No, just playing random, playing random card games. And then until one day, one of the lads decided to, for whatever reason, just bury one of the other lads in a bunch of chairs and flip a table over him. Why not? And then that became a thing. So every lunchtime, <laughs> we'd move from classroom to classroom. We'd always pick a different classroom. We'd sit, we'd have our lunch. We'd play cards and we called it the trademark. And all of a sudden, right before the end of break, one of the lads would go, trademark. And we would just flip all the tables and all the chairs, <laughs> flip everything in the room upside down and just walk out and leave it. <laughs> so, when, so, when the teachers, so when the teachers had come back from their, like, for the, ghost, their classroom. The ghost again. Yeah, the whole classroom was just turned upside down. Don't ask me why. I don't know why we did this, but it just became a thing. The trademark. It's a poltergeist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Never got found out with that one. Ever. Well, I hope the your teachers are listening now. Uh, until the now. Wor- the worst one that ever happened, and this is going to sound horrendous because it is. We used to, our school used to border on a primary school, like literally college, primary school, right next to each other. I can already other. see this going there bad. Is, was there a murder? There is a... Um, chest height fence between the two you can literally see the kids playing on the other side and one year we'd been to france and we bought a lot of firecrackers and we brought them back and we were throwing them at each other in school and some got thrown over like too far at the kids and thrown and thrown into the primary school not on purpose just because we were throwing them at each other and throwing and throwing them around and it threw over there and it and it blew up and one of the primary school teachers noticed it we got a, we fucking got an absolute fucking for it. 
Like, I nearly oh, got okay, suspended. I nearly got suspended. Why blind the child? Because, um, yeah, because you were nowhere near the kids. Literally nowhere near him. Um, it just happened to go over the fence into theirs. Oh, it's, it's still <laughs> scary though, isn't it? If, oh yeah, like, you, you 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 as a dad now, if you, if you found out that high school kids have been throwing firecrackers at your daughter, you'd be going. We weren't throwing them at the, these we kids. Throwing them at them. We we're throwing them at each other. I know, but it doesn't look like that. Exactly. To an adult, I know it does doesn't it? look like that. Uh, and I remember, I remember <laughs> the teacher literally pulled me in uh, and he said, "I know you were there. I know this person there. I know this person. There. I want to know who brought the firecrackers in." He was there and he was throwing them. And I swear down, this was about two weeks after the door situation as well, which didn't help. <laughs> and uh, he says, you've already in trouble because of the door. And you need to tell me, otherwise you're on verge of You still owe us for the door. And he brought my mum in for this meeting as well. And she mum like as a woman? Is she, is she a kind woman or is she oh, an angry no, woman? No, she's a rollover. Um, Soft as shit. So she, they basically blackmailed me into grassing on people. Otherwise, I get suspended. My mum was like, "You're gonna have to tell him. You're gonna have to tell him." So I told him. Stitches, boy. And he said to me, "Don't worry. I'm, I'm talking to various people. I won't let anyone know that it was you." Just so I was like, "Fine." Walked back into my class, sat back down. I swear, down, he must have been right behind me. Thirty seconds later, he walks in, says to my mate, "Ben, can I see you, please?" I was like. You couldn't make it just, any more yeah. obvious. And Ben, wa- my mate Ben, walks past me. He goes, "You grass him, bastard!" <laughs> <laughs> mate, if that were prison, you'd be dead. My yeah, my yeah. dad went. My dad went up to my mum. Said he's mm. like he, he's like you generally let them blackmail him there. Like if I, he goes a good job, I hadn't been there because I would have gone nuts at that teacher. Yeah, you've ruined his school life. Forever. Yeah. So yeah, I just uh, I'm sure there's more, but there's just ones that like it's a naughty boy, weren't you? You're a little naughty boy. Yeah, and so when I, when I got to college, and Did you knuckle down, that, boy. Yeah, yeah. It seems well, to be different. Like, switch all the naughty kids go. All the, all, all the kids who don't care about being yeah. at school and influence you, they're not there anymore. So you kind of tone it down a little yeah. bit. They become they become they become bricklayers and stuff, don't they? They go, yeah, they go for the apprenticeships <laughs> and uh, join like, armed forces and things like that, or just, you know, leave school. Yeah, work, in, work at Wilkinson's or chuffing Neto. Hey, my wife yeah, works at Wilkinson's. Some of my mates did. <laughs> hey, I, I've done a, a few shifts at Wilkos. Don't, I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying. They get in fast, and then by the time you go for a job, they're d- managing directors, and you think, fuck, <laughs> I should have yeah. just got a job. So no, I know technically but, that's not college years, but for me... We're ca- I'm counting it's, it. It's part of it because for me, as you're in our, college, because about the way our school was structured, it was yeah. I'm allowing it. There's no rules in this in this discussion. I want to talk about me and uh, believe it or not, guys, I have a full fledged A level in law. Can you believe that? <laughs> Can you believe that? Guess what? I never in my entire life have ever stepped foot in a law classroom or done a law lesson. <laughs> The administration at the college I was at was so bad that... Um, can you remember, did you get EMA where you got paid to go to college? No, it was no, literally, no. I think it was the year after I finished. Yeah, we got so £30 pound a week for attendance. Do you know what I mean? You had to turn up and sign in and get your EMA stamp and then you went straight into your bank account, which, whew, 30 quid when you were a little rock star that I was. It was a fucking million pounds. <laughs> and I used I used to just go into um, and g- get my EMA stamped from the law teacher, who was so oblivious and so old that didn't realise I'd never stepped foot in his lesson. So he used to stamp it every time, <laughs> to the point where he went, uh, "Good lesson today, Mister. M- uh, I'm not going to say my surname, Mister Odim." <laughs> 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 and uh, it, it, it was like, "Yeah, yeah, you, you really well." And then I twigged on. I twigged on quite early on. There was another goth in, in the class and he had same long black hair as I did, same black skinny jeans as I wore. And he thought I was him. <laughs> and he kept and, and believe it or not, I've got a, I've got I've I've got it in my record of achievement, if you can remember them. I've, oh, I've got, still my, got mine. <laughs> my yeah, I, I have with my law A level with the word pass next to it. Yeah. I know nothing about the law. I have a criminal record for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know something I mean? about the law then. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. It. Yeah. I oh, yeah, the and, law. And, yeah, and that was that was the first hijink when I realized you can get away with fucking anything in a really bad administrated place because like I say it was a community college. The other thing, the main the main one I did, but well, the first one was public services when I went into that because I thought 
back then, police weren't the villains that a lot of people make out that they are now. I'm not saying police are villains, but me and policemen don't get on at all nowadays, um, for obvious reasons, because I'm a pisshead. Uh, but I thought I'll be a, I'll be a Bobby because Bobby's back then. I thought got paid quite a lot. You know what I mean? Got paid a lot and nice cushy job. You get to drive a car. You get to ride a horse. Nice I don't pension. know. I just you what? Sorry. Get a nice pension. Get a nice pension. Yeah. I thought you said get a truncheon. And I'm like, well, that that is a that is a positive, <laughs> I suppose. Get a nice truncheon. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I'd do that, and I, little did I know that public services also meant army. And military. So, <laughs> the first year I, I did it, it was like, right, guys, we're going to Strensel in uh, York. I believe it's not far from you, Stig. Strensel Army Barracks. Mm. A million miles Never away. Never heard of it, but it's near York. Yeah. Close by. Yeah, and um, we're going to spend a week in army life. I thought, here we go. I'm getting paid e- EMA to sit and eat rations all day. Little did I know it was the most grueling and difficult week of my life. Um, I was even skinnier than I am now back then. I was a wee, a wee wisp. I wasn't even tall. And an army Bergen's a massive fucking backpack <laughs> full of everything. It's so heavy and I couldn't walk for it. And they made us do like a full grueling week in the in the army. I, f- I was in the army. They're waking me up at four in the morning and chucking my mattress out of the window and stuff like that. God. Like proper cold showers, eating crap, crap little rations and stuff. And, we had to go on treks around the moors and stuff like that, and I had a big, big backpack on, and I jumped over this dike like everyone else, all the sporty athletes and big rugby boys that were that looked like they were forty year old, even though they were sixteen. You know those guys <laughs> that are mature quick and they've got beards. They were jumping over this like dike, this this stream, loving easily like gazelles. I jump over, I crack my rib on the top of it, and I didn't mean. <laughs> so that was one of the things I did, and because. I didn't want to be known as, the, oh, it's just a little goth boy, you can't handle his son. I didn't tell anyone I cracked my rib. And Stig knows it's very difficult to hide a cracked rib. <laughs> I, it, was crack complete, rib. it was complete. And I was just like, mm, you know what I mean? Can't, can't, can't be like <gasps> wheezing and stuff like that for like two days. To the point where in my sleep, I just couldn't control my bodily functions and I shit myself, like literally. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. In a in a, in a barrack, laugh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I, it's in a barracks full of fourteen other bigger boys. You know what I mean? And I thought I, c- I can't let anyone know this. So I, I I had my Thundercats boxer shorts on. I love Thundercats, <laughs> still do. And I thought I bet. I, luckily, it was just a shirt. You know what I mean? It went full on <laughs> shit myself. So, but but they, they they were soiled. I was like shit. Right. So what I'm gonna and my my bunk was. Station next to like this, like this wardrobe or something like that. So I, I picked my pants up and stashed them behind the wardrobe. No one will ever find that. It's little, weeks like I survived. I survived the trip. I had to go to the hospital, and and they said, yeah, you 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 you've broken your rib and stuff like that, uh, bed rest and stuff like that. Months, months, months went by. Still doing this public service malarkey. Didn't like it. I was just about ready to get asked to leave, <laughs> basically, because I weren't pulling my weight, and. We got a uh, the, the the teacher was he was called Major Major Johnson he was an ex army Major Johnson Major Major Johnson <laughs> he was called Major Johnson that's what we have to call him Major Johnson our sir and he was like he came out he came out and went who here knows about Thundercats I was like <laughs> I was like what I didn't say anything you know when you know when you know when you just scream beetroot I was going beetroot <laughs> I've been on the phone to Strensel. <laughs> I was like, we were the last school trip of the year. They have found some soiled underwear behind the cupboard. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! And th- th- basically, they found my, my must have been weeks old shitty boxer shorts <laughs> <laughs> and gone right. We need to because obviously this, our, our college was the last one to go, so they knew it was us. Well, they, they, they thought it was us. And Major Johnson had this way. I, I don't know if he. He'd been great at Guantanamo Bay and places like that. He was very good at torturing us. So he says, I'm withholding EMA, your, your okay. payment, from everyone until someone owns up to this. And everyone's like, oh, sir, no, no. Basically, bear in mind, it's just a classroom of boys. There was no girls on this car, even though they were allowed. There just weren't any. 
And he's like, right. And I just thought, I really need this money. And I'm not going to, it's not like I'm going to get fined, is it? For just saying they were mine. It was an embarrassing. So I went into his office hours after. So they didn't put two and two together like Stig and his little grassy moment. And I went, Major Johnson, I need to talk to you. Um, remember when I broke my rib? And says, oh, yes, yes, I remember. Are you, are, you, are you okay? Are you fully healed? And something? Yeah, 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 I'm fine. I says, I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they were my underpants. And he went, right. <laughs> and he went ballistic, like army ballistic. They had to fumigate pipes, <laughs> water pipes in the barracks. I was like, what? He went, this college has had to pay thousands of pounds worth of <laughs> damages of like, I don't know, probably cholera. I don't know what I'd, what I'd given them. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I could have killed people with my shit. And yeah, I, I, that's when Orange. I got asked to, I got asked to leave. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it was because of all that. And I had to literally, I've, I've never seen any, any of those boys ever again. And I'm so glad because obviously he would have fucking told them all, wouldn't he? He would have told them all. I don't my, understand uh, why they even went. Like, if you found a shitty pair of pants, you just throw them away, surely. You didn't, yeah. like, shove them into a pipe, did you? Did you just find a wardrobe? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. It was like a, like a, like a load of plumbing behind the cupboard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was dark. <laughs> I nearly killed Strenzel. Imagine if I killed a full platoon. <laughs> what a way to go. <laughs> Yeah, and, and to this day, probably that bit when he came out of the, his office and said, who's heard of Thundercats? Probably the most embarrassing moment of my entire existence, and I've had many of those. Could you imagine that? When it's just, like the deepest, darkest secret. In my, in my life then, as a 16-year-old, there was no bigger secret. Do you know what I mean? That, that was the big one, the absolute ultimate. And, and do you know when you're laid in bed sometimes on a night and your, your little conscience talks to you and it goes like, It'll, my conscience will go, oodles, <laughs> oodles. Remember that time you got kicked out of college for shitting? And I can't sleep then for the rest of the fucking day. I can't sleep. Oh, God. I am. I I'm getting it. second-hand embarrassment for you. I can feel my face going red. <laughs> Imagine if there were girls in that class. I'd have been doomed. I'd have been a pariah, a social pariah. I'd have been pff, cast out forever. Luckily, I went to music college, became a rock star, and shagged everybody. That's the end of my tale. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm, I'm glad I've got that off my chest. Now everyone knows. Well, now it's out in the world. Out my ass. Yeah, <laughs> fuck it. I'm, 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 I'm in my late twenties now. It don't matter, does it? <laughs> Come on, I then. I can never some more again, stories. Now. Yeah, never again. I've got a few. I have to go back to uh, school though. Um, but I wasn't on the last episode, so I'm allowed. So this is my absolute favourite yes. school story. And we went through a phase, and it's a bit like Stig's furniture story. Um, we went through a phase of, um, with, with the school furniture, we'd, we'd start sort of unscrewing things. Um, so it'd be like doors, it'd be tables, chairs, and just kind of like to the point where people would open a door and just go poof, straight down, or a table, just brush past, poof, down. Mm, <laughs> and we yeah, become yeah. like absolute ninjas at it we'd start taking in screwdrivers and we'd learn this furniture and we'd just be like brr, 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 done. <laughs> and we'd, we'd balance things so I bet perfectly you're also doing flat know. pack I, I bet she's a <laughs> queen of it I can take things apart and not put them together again this is the trouble do you always make that noise as well brr, 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 you're doing yeah. it <laughs> yeah I don't have a drill or anything this is me this is you and an Alan and we key. picked on th- this went on for months and months there was not one bit of furniture that was safe in our school um and <laughs> we furniture were... bandits <laughs> and this was um we were having tutor group which is yeah when you go in for registration and we picked on one kid who was not the most popular kid in the class i'm ashamed to say now but we did his chair we did the table we possibly did you the horrible window bully. next to him we did the whole shebang and he sat down and he absolutely went down like a fucking sack of shit. There was <laughs> chairs Best everywhere. The desk was basically in fr- like <laughs> on top of him. The window, I think, kind of came down <laughs> on top of him. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. So literally for, for months and months after that, he would... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> he was... <laughs> he... Oh, that poor bastard. He would like literally... Um... <laughs> check every single like part of furniture before he sat on it and this went on for a good like two three months 
every time we piss ourselves every time he would just check he'd really get the chair give it a good shake table bash down <laughs> and the chair the furniture pulling apart had just about come to an end of its life cycle everyone had started to relax a bit you know doors weren't falling down spontaneously like lockers weren't exploding and this kid, <laughs> we we did it to him again we did the, with the same thing like his entire desk we just took it apart and he th- he just about got to the point where he felt safe sat down everything everywhere and he just led on the floor as if he was dead like why is it always me? <laughs> that poor oh. guy. <laughs> People are going to hate us after this episode. I know. But it was so no, but fucking funny. This is, the, this is the thing, though, isn't it? When, you, when you're younger, you're just an horrible bastard. Oh That's God. just how it is. I know. Yeah. I Kids are I mean, I mean, I'm, horrible I'll, things. I never bullied anyone as much as... Uh, I, I, I was never a bullied sh- I was a shit, but I didn't ever bully anyone, so... No, I yeah, didn't. I sort of just joined in with the horrible things that were happening. Andy was just a, yeah. a, a proper right horrible bastard. <laughs> I wasn't the ringleader. I was quite nice, really. I don't um, think you were, were you? <laughs> well, looking back, possibly not. Um, college was like the first college was a bit of a funny one because it was sort of when I didn't attend that much. Although I did do, I started doing um, like the. Because you didn't get EMA, Awards. you didn't have money. You'd have been. You'd I didn't. I might then. have stayed. Well, my mum sort yeah. of said, well, if you, want to, if you want to go to college, you have to work your way through it. So I was working in yeah, Virgin yeah, Megastore, yeah, and I loved it. And I love working at Virgin. And so I spent my time there, basically. Which is ironic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but I did start doing this Duke of Edinburgh Award in college because, um, basically, I fancied the teacher that was doing it. Nerd. I thought you wanted to be an army. <laughs> no. Although I did do I'm army cadets, and that was, that was a whole other story. Um, so... We were doing, I think it was one of the walks and the teachers kind of met us halfway just to make sure we weren't dead and everything. And I kind of convinced this teacher that I fancied to, because it was, um, we were in groups How old were you, by the way? How old? Yeah. How old were you? Uh, 16, 17, I suppose. It was first college. So it fancying men at that age. You're such a, you're a child. I'm joking. I was at 17 to fancy men. Anyway, he I'm was joking. probably in the wrong. Won't mention any names. Um, <gasps> I, oh, <laughs> no, no, it's not as bad as it sounds, but it's oh, pretty bad. Oh, <laughs> Keep. <laughs> you probably should. So oh. we we get to where his, leave the his checkpoint basically, <laughs> and I just couldn't be asked with it. I said I started, I was feeling sick, so I convinced mm. me to give, I uh, convinced him to give me a lift um, back to the finish line. He's All like, right. no, no, I can't. I have to stay here. I was like, I just went on and on at him basically. Um, and we were in his car and I started fucking around like with the windows and everything and like going through all of his CDs. And I remember he had this. You're taking about his car with you. Yes. <laughs> taking the door off. <laughs> and I, he, I remember like clearly he, he had one of those CD players, which was kind of you, you plug it into your Discman and it's like a little cassette that you plug into the yes. radio. Do you remember? Yes. So yeah. I was fucking about with that and completely distracting him. And um, he was trying to like, lean over to grab it off me and he, he drove into a wall like he drove into <gasps> the side of a wall so crashed Fuck. his car to the point it, it wasn't that it wasn't like a bad crash or anything but it was to a point where his wheel was probably disaligned um <gasps> it turns out he didn't have insurance <laughs> so he'd like driven a student around no insurance whatsoever he got absolutely Gross. bollocked i don't think he came back the following year um oh my god you got a man sacked no, I didn't get a man sacked. His lack of insurance got him sacked. Unbelievable. Completely irresponsible behaviour from him. I don't know. This t- it takes two to tango. <laughs> it takes one person to drive with insurance. Um, yeah, I did, ne- I did nearly wipe out a platoon, so it's all right. Exactly. And then the <laughs> other one, this was also in first college that I didn't really attend. This... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that delay. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> you told that story half hour ago. Um, so this is when, again, I, I was I was attending college, but I wasn't attending college. And the reason I didn't really attend college was because I discovered a band called Amen. I don't know, Eagles, if you would have heard of them, Casey Chaos. I have. Um, yeah, okay. I've heard of them, yeah. And I became quite good friends with the band to the point where they would let me stay on the tour bus. Um, to the point where you were wanking them off? No. Um, not yet. But I've got another wank story, but I'm not going to tell that one. Because <laughs> it could implicate someone quite badly. We'll do it in the patron section. <laughs> but this was in the same. This was on What's the same. What's next tour. week's topic? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> wank, wank days. Wank of the week. Um, <laughs> wank of the is- fire. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to I Wank of the Week know. with Candy Machine. <laughs> this week, week I have week. mostly been wanking. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, a new <laughs> uh, do you know what? I still know these guys, so I might message them later and tell them to listen to the podcast. But anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> they might they'll turn around and go, this. but you didn't wank because that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so it was me and a male friend, and we were both probably 16, 17, yeah, we would have been 16, 17 by the time, and the band, for some reason, enjoyed our company enough to let us go on the tour bus with them. Um, mm. And on a tour bus, you can pee in a toilet, you can't shit you can't in a shit toilet, enough. you can't yep. put toilet roll in a toilet. If I the macerate not, gets destroyed. I, yeah, I, exactly, it just blocked, blocked everything up. I wasn't particularly i was a bit rusty with the rules and <laughs> it was a bad week for me to not oh, be able no. to throw things down a toilet <gasps> oh did you have did you oh shit so, really throw things down the toilet i did um yeah. and of course <sighs> sure enough all the plumbing got blocked up and everything and I a mouse in here. they had to get you know they had to get everyone off the bus they had to make a stop everything that they had to really flush the system and i thought you was going to say at first that you had Tour bus belly, because tour bus belly is a real fucking thing. No, but that's it. I have shouted on a, on tour before. Oh. <laughs> tour <laughs> bus belly, it. It, it's a curse. It's a yeah. curse. It's horrendous. When you get on that bus, <laughs> yeah, yep. kebabs and burgers. Mm, yeah. Oh, I've got oh, a really garbage. good fart story, but I'll tell you that in a minute. This, it's not a college story, but <laughs> this I'll is what this know. episode's for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I threw my my thing down the uh, down the toilet. Got the whole the whole bus had to stop, get flushed, and whatever you. And oh, everyone no. automatically thought that my friend, the male friend, had taken a dump on the tour bus, and I completely threw him under the bus. Like literally, I did not. <gasps> own it. I let him take the flak for that. Oh my god! Yeah. Why did you? Why did you just innocently say, "Hi, I'm a girl." Sometimes during the month, I, I, ha- I have needs. Can you imagine? A 16, I didn't know what to do with year old girl. Yeah, it's the, probably the, the worst thing to say. Isn't it? That they were, yeah. you know, in love with at the time. Oh um, yeah, that'd be awful, um, wouldn't it? I'll move on to my fart story. This is a good one. This didn't happen, <laughs> happen in college, but this was the first time I went on tour with Wednesday 13. And mm-hmm. um, so you have uh, sort of three three bunks either side, basically. So I would um, always sleep in the middle one. Wednesday would sleep across um, the road for me because I was friends with him and he was just kind of looking after me a bit. And, you know, yeah. sometimes you wake up in the night and you farted yourself awake, but you're not really sure yep. what if you did. So that happened. And I sort of woke up with a start. <laughs> I was like, did I just fart? I'm like, I'm not really sure. It's like, my ass doesn't feel like I farted. Let so, me check. Yeah, it's like, no, it feels all right down there. In the meantime, mm. I heard Wednesday get out of bed, so he, I had obviously woken him up as yeah, well. you fart. <laughs> so, I heard him sort of pottering around, and um, I started to go back to sleep. And I did it again. And I heard him like stop what he was doing. And kind of like <laughs> run, run back to his bed. And in the morning, I'd sort of forgotten it had happened. But he um, he was telling me in the morning, he's like, I heard someone fart last night. I was like, oh, God, oh, no. He's like, yeah, wake me up. I was, I was having a little, I made myself a cup of tea. And he's like, and then it farted. And then somebody farted again and it scared me back to bed. I was like, <laughs> anything. This is my first night on a tour bus. Is this really rock- your farts? Are, your farts are that aggressive that you you woke you woke him up and then scared him back to bed. Yeah, exactly. It's, it is, su- no, it is surprising how how real like these these rock stars, especially the the fully make makeup ones and all these like Satan looking ones, and then. The normal, well, I was just making a pot noodle and someone farted and scared me back into bed. Because they had us people at the end of the day. Wednesday's the worst for it. He's the most normal. He's an absolute scaredy cat as well. And yeah. I don't want to keep going on about tour stories, but this one is funny as well. Um, so we were, we were crossing the channel and you're all supposed to get out of the bus mm. and uh, just go upstairs. But it was normally sort of four yeah. or five o'clock in the morning, completely dead to the world. So me and Wednesday decided to stay on the bus. Um downstairs yeah. and the bus driver said well if you don't turn the electrics on you'll probably be all right and um you you just feel everything so much more you feel the moving and the shaking and i was like just waiting for the that moment the water starts to come up around me i was like wednesday it's like, what he's like this is a terrible idea and he said i know when are we about to crash so it was just oh it's horrible 
Um, Fuck that. So, yeah. so I guess I have college to thank for being able to go on tour because I sort of didn't go go to college to. I will never, around, ever, basically. ever want to go on a tour bus ever again. I just think they're fucking horrendous. I don't. Mind I bet they're a lot nicer when you've got a lot more money. Yeah, the ones we were on were those Crosslands ones, and they were okay. But yeah, the van good. tour is not much fun. The first time we, <laughs> I, we, we, we lived in a, a, a Volkswagen Transporter for six Ooh. weeks. No. <laughs> and six people. It's disgusting. You think yeah. these fucking you've had fart stories? My God. Biggie. <laughs> <sighs> Speaking of farts, old farts. Oh, thanks very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I haven't got sort of in the Victorian times stories quite like that. But I mean, it was my formulative <laughs> years at college because I went through. That journey of one. music music discovery that I kind of mentioned briefly on the pod before, where yeah, I wasn't yeah. quite sure what I was what I was into. I was either into chart music, I went into a bit of funk, Motown, soul. Then it was <coughs> rock, grunge, and then hip hop. So I mean, yeah. my my clothing reflected that. So I had all these kind of like these huge sort of MC Hammer American pants football. On tops baggy jeans but then i'll be walking around with like german para boots and having <laughs> oh, wow. really big curly frothed hair on the top with a, a hooped earring and then a bit of a goatee and i, I just didn't really know Stop what it. i was See, that, that's one thing that i never seemed to hit me in my like teens was my music never dictated what i wore it's really odd do you like, still look I, exactly what you dressed then yeah like i, I would just be default Default kind of default <laughs> lad, <laughs> default lad, Mr. Like, Matalan. But like, if anyone said to you, oh, "Fuck off, not Matalan," but, like, <laughs> but if anyone like back then, if you, if I showed you a picture, you'd be like, "Yeah, tell me the kind of music this guy listens to." Where well, he listens to Brit pop, he listens to chart music, yeah, 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 yeah. standard dance yeah. stuff. Nah, and a like, bitter ever living. Like I was listening to heavy metal and you know old rock and stuff like that, but you just. Yeah, you really like new metal and all, didn't you? You were big into yeah, that. Yeah, I was. I like I I loved emo music, but I just never. You just the didn't culture, dress. I didn't never. I've never ever dressed the way that music. Music's never. Yeah, dictated. Yeah, I used to walk. It's weird. It's weird. Used to walk around like Neo at the end of the Matrix. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was it. You you had a sort of a personal choice, and then until you you found what you liked in the end, and that you, you kind of felt comfortable in. And now I'm sort of just hoodies, jeans, and. Hey, I've got sort a pink of... tie dye vest on. I am not a goth anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, no, exactly. But but that's what you sort of fell into. But that's what I, I was like trying Jesus. to reflect, and it didn't it didn't work half the time. It was really very very weird. But yeah, mm. I mean, all we were, all we wanted to do was basically at some point have an excuse to get go stone. and get stones. So it didn't matter yeah, whether I knew we did it were going to be that in the lesson. <laughs> at the end of the lesson, I was working part time as well. So as soon as I finished work, I meet up with my mates. We go and get stoned. That was literally. Alcohol had very little impact on our college years. We would obviously go out for your beer and stuff, but it was always about let's go for a smoke. I, I have always said that and, about like the difference between weed and booze. Like booze tends to lead to misery. Weed's quite a happy little drug, isn't it? Mm. It's quite a social little we circle. You're all giggling. You, you uh, giggle your sense to death, if anything. Totally. We'd go around the mate's house. We'd just chill out. We'd play video games, listen to music, laugh. It was just and literally... food tastes so much better all... when you're stoned. Yeah, all the not massive I've done it in and stuff years. like that. I, don't, I, I can't touch none of that. I'm not allowed. But fucking hell. I miss that moment when you... You know when munchies creep up when you're fucking 17-year-old and you're, oh, if I eat this pizza now, we, it's we were... the best pizza in the world. My mate Jay, we used to go to his house a lot. And um, mm. even though... His room was at the top of the house. It reeked of weed. Every time yeah. he went into his room, you could smell it. But his it parents now anyway. he still was under that impression that he somehow was hiding it from them. They had no idea, even though all these people kept frequenting around his house. <laughs> and this one Coming particular with the night, reddest we eyeballs just, ever. You're right. Yeah, we were just chilling out, having a smoke, and then I don't know about half twelve. There was a knock on the door, uh, or maybe a bit earlier than that. And there was this massive panic of, oh my god, it's the police! You know they've. They've realised that we it's all smoke weed for some reason. They're going to come and arrest us. <laughs> so we started like hiding all the weed and everything, having this massive panic attack until one of us realised we remembered we ordered pizza and had forgotten. <laughs> and that was the pizza turning up. <coughs> I mean, Guys, I it's went, the feds. Turn off the Cypress Hill now. 
Fuck. It's, yeah, I mean, I went to see Cypress Hill in concert when I was at college. They were awesome. For me, they were my happiest years. And, and a lot of fun. I went to parties. I did a, a trip for the first say, time. Actually, that was awesome. Same. You know, yeah, it we're was... More, we're going to talk me, more about parties in the, in the Patreon bit. I have very, just very fond memories of my college time. And although we didn't get up to a lot of hijinks, a lot of it was just, just chilling out and enjoying life, basically. That's, this but is yeah, what I said but, on, yeah, that's, 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 that's mega. This is what I said on the, um, on the school days episode we did. I really loved school and college, even though I, I had scenarios where worst day in my school. life and stuff like that. I, I loved all of it because I, I were always in with a really strong crowd like high school, like primary school, high school, they were, I, I was a bit more like Stig where I didn't have an identity like physically. I still liked what I liked, but I didn't dress. I wasn't brave enough to do stuff like that. And then later into high school and college, I was like, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I'm going to be who, who I am. And I, don't, I always had like a really strong group of mates, so I never felt like an outcast ever. And then the fucking second that you're in a band, a school band, and your band's winning Battle of the Bands in your local area against all other schools. You're a god at school. <laughs> Trust me. I became a god. It's the, it's the only place I've ever become anywhere remotely close to popular. I was untouchable. It was incredible. The only, the only def- thing I would just bad, very quickly mention, I was just going to say, it was just about um, being a white guy listening to hip-hop. It's very difficult when people say, oh, what is. music are you into? That I, I didn't go massively over the top looking like Eminem when I was dressing up. I was trying to reflect a little bit of what I liked. But, you know, when you're a white yeah, guy and listen to hip hop, a lot of people look at you just a bit weird back then, sort of like, oh, really? Oh, we had, a few, we had a few Eminems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did. We had yeah. some Marshall Mavers every, rocking around the school. Everyone had a few Eminems at our, from our age. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a few Fred Durst as well. Hey, in my, in my high school, we had one guy that was clinging onto vanilla ice. Somehow, Whoa. clinging, clinging. <laughs> like, you can't, that's not cool anymore. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I, I always I, I, I miss that about, like, like because I, I, I pick my nephews up from school and they're in high school and stuff like that. There's no identity anymore that I can see as an old man. No one, no, there's no cliques and stuff like that. Mm. Everyone's just everyone, aren't there? There's, uh, it's good because I, I bet, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I bet there's a lot less bullying nowadays. It's all be cyber bullying instead, won't it? It's, it's still bullying, mm. but I, I was listening to a podcast about something and he said, oh, his son is 13 ish. And he said, and his friend's yeah. gay and he's out as gay. And everyone's like, yeah, and fine. Everyone's like, cool. Yeah, no isn't that good? No one could have done that in my yeah. grew up. Not a, yeah, chance. not a chance. I don't mean not to that chance. extreme, but that fitting yeah. in must be easier now than it was back in the yeah. day, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There, there is there is a silver lining at the at the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Bless them. It must be fucking weird growing up in an age where, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll text you when it's time to come out. Not plan it. If you're not there, we're gonna what? We're gonna leave you because that's mm. right now. If you plan something and no one turned up, fuck them. You know what I mean? It was. It was a lot of different times. Oh, granddads are talking now. But we'll leave, <laughs> we'll leave it at that until the patron. We'll, we'll talk more about party. I've, I've got like one that. question before we go. Do go you on. think we'd have been friends in college? No. If we Me and you would have been. <laughs> Me and you would have been candy because we would have been listening uh, yeah, to the same stuff. Do you know what? You say that, but like I said, I, I, was, I have a group of, core group of friends who I was friends with in school and college, which I'm, who I'm still friends with. But I also had other groups that I latched onto and, and went yeah. to their house parties and went out with to see because yeah, I, had, I did I like that kind of music I there was people in. that I would go to up at, there was like a, a rock night up in Borough, I'd go to stuff like that with them because none of my friends were interested in it yeah, so I did yeah. form other friendships that's cool. with people that's, that's healthier though isn't it did dress like the scene they were into even though yeah. I didn't but because I was kind of into the same things. Like I had friends who, because we played Counter Strike a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was Game a group names. of us that played Counter Strike. Didn't hang out that much outside of school. <clears throat> Every now and again we did, but majority of the time was just on Counter Strike. But it was completely separate from our core group. Like so, I, I was a bit weird. Really, I just kind of bounced between. I had a core group and I bounced between other people who I was kind of friends with because of similar interests. That's that's a good segue into what I was going to talk about right now because we didn't get any uh, feedback about this episode and it seems in our Discord 
most of our demographic were just gamers. That's and I'm by by no means I'm saying this is a bad thing, but most people that we've spoken to, you're about the gamer this, of all gamers, aren't you? Uh, no. <laughs> Put it this way: they weren't going around smashing Jim Dawes in. Yeah, and shit in the sand and stuff like that. It seems. It seems like um, the, it's, it's funny. Like we we we, we, we can be okay. saying, would we have been friends? It seems like we we're, we're friends now because we are the outcasts, aren't we? In a weird way, we are the the, the people on the fringe and stuff like that. And like a lot of people, I, I imagine like. Someone like Gadget, he he's probably had, had a he probably studied hard and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And he enjoyed school for different reasons, for like the the curriculum reasons I, and stuff like that. I tell you one thing now, not just because of the pod, but even not that long before doing the pod, I probably embraced my hobby more now than I did before because a lot yeah, of I people didn't, still f- find it weird that I game or even do a podcast. No, I mean I I, I was uh, genuinely. Um, when I when I was younger, it was I would go to Leeds Festival, and I didn't care. Yeah, like my my friends, like yeah, they're not coming. Like, like I say, I've got this core group of friends who are I still friends with them now, but they are yeah. outside of like football and drinking. They have no interest in gaming. They only recently found out I did a podcast because they don't they're not really interested in that side of things. Yeah, and I found like. Same found friends like you guys and other people in our discord and other people over the internet just because i've gone you know what fuck it like it's just fuck it yeah yeah like who cares for the people over the internet they have interest the same interest in me i can talk to them about it i can speak to them every day and like and then i form friendships from that so but i did kind of still have that a little bit in college and in school like i, I still I'm had still, like people i would I'm latch really on to because of the same interests mm. I'm still really new to this, like that, um, those friendships. Really, this this internet scene of like um, people like being into games and stuff. Because I wouldn't, I would never. I God, I didn't get into games proper. Like I had a SNES and stuff, but it was just something I might have played on a Sunday afternoon every now and again. Do you know what I mean? It was never a big a big deal to me, and until I was like, I really got into gaming when I was a stay at home dad type thing. Not, I weren't stay at home dad, but you know what I mean. When I was when have, when, when I was domesticated, to go out. yeah. When I'm domesticated, that's it. Like like a pet. <laughs> <laughs> I go home from work. And You're then a time got and, you, aren't you? Since she got neutered, yeah. <laughs> she's got neutered, and I stopped doing hedonistic Oodles things, got and taking, <laughs> yeah, taking things I shouldn't have done because I I spent three four years of my life out of the country exploring the world, and I didn't see all that. Do you know what I mean? I didn't go to uni because I thought, fuck it, I'm going to see the world. It twisted my mind a lot, but I've also, like I say, I've got memories that I'll cherish forever. But uh, like I said, we haven't got no feedback because most of the people we've spoken to have said, no, I just, I just went to school, I did my lessons, I came home and played games. I'm like, I kind of in a weird way envy that. I, I weren't mocking it in any way. I, I'm like, oh, look at you all with your money. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> look at you all, well-to-do people and kind-hearted people and... You're not scared of who you are and stuff like that. You don't have to put up a fucking the thing, shield. The, and... the biggest thing from jumping from school into college is that there is that change in that lifestyle that you're not regimented Massively. like you are at Massively. school. You have that freedom. And, and that in this really country, to you don't wear a uniform anymore, do you? Because mm. I know in like no. America, no. they don't wear a uniform ever. But in I this al- country, I also it was a big f- deal, wasn't it? I feel like as soon as you got to college, the teachers spoke to you a lot better. They spoke to you like adults. You didn't have to call them Mr. Yeah. Smith and stuff anymore. It was did you? very weird. It was genuinely like when you when you went from you were the same age, still sixteen, yeah. you just had a yeah. summer in between. When you yeah. got back, they speak to you like friends are like yeah. uh, on adults. their level and they just uh, adults and they never treat tra- you like shit. Like if you didn't do your work, they'd probably give you a bit of a turn off, but it'd Absolutely. be more of a quiet word over here. You need to do this rather than shouting at you in class. You wouldn't get shouted yeah, not, at. Just, not a single. I don't think a single. Even person if you messed about, they wouldn't shout at you. They'd yeah, you, like, not, a single person history has never been um, in detention in college because it's not a thing, is it? Yeah, no. It's like if you're not, you fuck off. Yeah, you treat it like a, in a weird way. It's like a job, isn't it? An, an unpaid job where you're here with your own volition. You don't have to be here. Don't you're only wasting your own fucking time. It's, I, I tell you how what it. Some of the teachers were so cool in my colleges that when we had our 
A level Leavers Ball. And it was Leavers Ball, not a prom. No, we didn't call it a prom. We called call it, it prom now. Dance. It's not a prom. <laughs> it's Leavers Ball. And we invited some of the teachers along because we liked them uh, so much. Yes. <laughs> yes, we did, mate. We did. And we did. Two of the teachers dancing and grinding on each other, pissed out their heads, getting off with each other on the dance floor. It's like into it because they didn't give a shit they were were just like yeah we're around these kids are all going now like but they were so comfortable being around us at that age that they were just like yeah fuck it Mm. we're young adults (laughs) though weren't we we were were getting there we were were entering the world like when i left college i was just about turning into an 18 year old you know what i mean a man or a, 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 a boy a man in a boy's body type thing but yeah but thanks for for, for indulging in these these colleges. Next time we do one of these, it's going to be early work years. <laughs> I think <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Interviews and all that nonsense. So yeah, uh, we we haven't had any feedback because again, our demographic, our listeners are all well-to-do, nice people by the sounds of things, which is quite nice. I think it's quite reassuring. Really, thanks for being yourselves. And next week. We are going to be doing long-running franchises. Um, Stig's going to take the helm on this one. I believe it's probably going to be a positive spin on it, isn't it? What we what we like? Yeah, favorite long running long yeah, yeah. favorite long running <laughs> franchises. So whether it's a yeah. long running game franchise, film, TV, yeah. book, whatever your favorite like one of those is. There's plenty yeah. out there. Yeah, but this is it, really. Uh, as always. Links to all our extracurricular activities are in the show notes and at modernescapism.co.uk. And please consider becoming a patron to help support our endeavour. And with it being the beginning of the month, now is the best time to hit that pay us some money button. Please, please, it helps us. It helps us. It feeds us. It feeds us. For those very lucky few that are patrons, we'll meet you in the green room in a second. But for everyone else, this has been an episode. Thank you. Class dismissed. Bye. 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 Three second delay, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we won't have you any other way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not fucking wrong. <laughs>